Jaden was taken aback for a second, then calmly said, You're right. Sorry. I'll back off. Being the third wheel all this time hasn't gotten me any info on Mike's dad anyway. He really was laying low, and maybe Mike didn't even know anything about what his father was doing. The FBI might need to find another way to approach this investigation. Little did Jada know, Jasmine had become an unexpected factor in his investigation plan. After that time, Jasmine and Mike had private dates, just the two of them. But they left Jasmine feeling more and more distant from him. Ugh, why does this wig have to be so long? And these freaking shoes! Why do girls want to torture themselves with these things? Jasmine thought about the last time she was with Jaden. How she could just remove the stupid heels and enjoy being carried by him. But of course, that could never happen in front of Mike. Jaden has kept his promise and leaves us to alone. But why do I feel like something is missing? You look really beautiful today. That necklace is divine. Uh, yeah, I got it from my dad's antique cabinet this morning. Guess it once belonged to some ancient Egyptian queen. My dad has a bunch of these. Oh, really? How come? Well, he developed a very deep passion for collecting antiques and has filled our whole house with all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Just then, Mike knew exactly what to do with rich and naive Jasmine while she still looked totally oblivious to it. That night, Jasmine struggled to fall asleep. She wondered how Jaden could just disappear into thin air like that. Fine. Don't let me see you again. I'll make you watch me eat 10 buckets of fried chicken and then force you to run 10 laps while carrying me. Jasmine didn't realize, however, that behind her inexplicable frustration toward Jaden, she actually missed him. The next day, as soon as Jasmine arrived at school, Mike approached her urgently. Have I mentioned that I'm turning 16 this weekend? No, you haven't. Any special plans for your big day then? Yes, actually. That's why I came to find you. I wanted to make sure you had enough time to put together the most stunning outfit, because I'd like you to meet my father there. You must make a good impression on him. Um, wow. I'm gonna need to think about it, okay? After that, Jasmine looked everywhere for Jaden, but couldn't find any trace of him. Jaden, where on earth have you been? That evening, while Jaden was discussing the current situation with his partner, he was surprised to see Jasmine's figure at the door. How did she find her way here? How dare you go AWOL for the past few days? Do you realize how many excuses I needed to give the student supervisor just to get your address? Then Jasmine began to tell Jaden about her latest date with Mike, how she felt that Mike was not the right match for her, and that Mike wanted to introduce her to his father at Mike's birthday party. I think I need to break things off before any family gets involved. However, after the FBI team hit a dead end because they couldn't get any intel, Jaden realized this party was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for them to catch the thief. Wait, you can't give up so soon. You were so determined to win Mike over before. Don't just dump him over cold feet. At least wait until after the party to make your decision. Yeah, you're right. I'll go to the party. After that, Jasmine left. She was trying not to feel the sadness building inside her, but the night that she and Jaden nearly kissed played on repeat in her head. Would things be different if I just confessed my feelings to Jaden? I should let him know how I feel about him. So Jasmine headed back to Jaden's place. When she was almost there, she saw him seeing someone off. Huh? There was another person at his house? Why didn't I see him just then? Jasmine quickly hid behind a wall, out of sight. That party is surely our golden ticket. And we thought you going undercover as Jaden and giving that dude a makeover was all in vain. He's a she. And her name is Jasmine. Oh, did someone catch feelings? Don't forget that you're an FBI agent, James. <laughs> Jaden, that is. <laughs> Jasmine couldn't believe what she just heard and saw. When the man left, she stormed right over to Jaden. When were you going to tell me about your double life, James? Ugh, I wish I could tell you everything, but I really can't. But I won't deny what you did hear. I'm an FBI agent, and I've been undercover as a high school student to, to follow Mike. Jasmine, please listen to me. I'll tell you everything when the right time comes. So I was just a tool that you used to get closer to Mike. And since that didn't work, you're done with me? No, that's not. And why Mike? What do you need from him? I can't tell you anything else right now. But please just be careful around him, okay? He's not as nice as he tries to seem. I'm going to send FBI agents to keep an eye on you at the party. No, you will not. You won't do anything because you and the FBI are going to leave me alone. Jasmine, please. As much as it hurt to look at him again, Jasmine turned back around. My friends call me Gucci, but I guess you wouldn't know. 
While Jasmine was still mad at Jaden, she couldn't help questioning why the FBI had to send people to follow Mike. Suddenly, she remembered the overheard conversation. That party was surely our golden ticket, and we thought you going undercover as Jaden and giving that dude a makeover was all in vain. Maybe I could find the answer at Mike's birthday party. In the following days, Jaden relentlessly tried in every way to make amends with Jasmine. He messaged her on every social platform, from Facebook to Instagram to Twitter, and she blocked him on each one. He flew paper planes that read, I'm sorry, into Jasmine's room, but she just stared coldly at him through the window while tearing the planes all up and throwing them in the trash. One morning, Jasmine woke up and even found a dove delivering Jaden's apology letter, but she completely ignored it still. Mike's birthday party finally came. Why do I feel so unsettled? Maybe it was because of Gary's hamburger this afternoon? Meanwhile, Mike was also lost in his own thoughts. Will Dad be able to get on with the plan? I wonder what disguise he'll show up in. Right then, Tiffany approached them. Mike, I have a present for you. Mike opened the envelope to find pictures of Jasmine from when she was a tomboy. I just wanted to remind you of the person you're really dating. I don't care about who she was before, because I love who she is now, my amazing girlfriend. Jasmine felt partly appreciative of Mike's feelings for her, but she was also exhausted from the pressure of trying to be someone she wasn't. If only you knew that this isn't the real me. As they walked away, Mike leaned in close and whispered in Jasmine's ear, Let's go meet my dad, privately. Jasmine followed Mike to the rooftop, but she saw nobody when they got there. Where is he? Just be patient. He always shows up on time. At that moment, a kind-looking old man appeared. Jasmine looked around in confusion, wondering where he had come from. Before she could introduce herself, he started to speak. So you must be the lovely Jasmine. Mike has told me so much about you. I heard your father is a famous collector of antiquities. Y yes you know my dad? I know he has something that's truly coveted. Jasmine had no idea what he was talking about. She turned to Mike and saw him mouthing, It's you. Come here, girl. I have a gift for you. A diamond ring that's perfect for your delicate hands. Jasmine hesitated, but somehow she found herself slowly reaching out her hand. Just before her hand could reach his, there was a rustling sound. Rat! Suddenly, there was a loud explosion and smoke filled the air. Jasmine fell to the ground, unconscious. Jaden rushed in and saw Mike's father disappear into the smoke as they fled. His head told him to chase them, but seeing Jasmine lying on the ground, he immediately ran to Jasmine and carried her out of there. Jasmine woke up and saw her dad and three brothers anxiously standing around. Through their accounts, she knew that an anonymous message had been sent to her father last night, demanding he hand over a precious necklace in exchange for Jasmine. The police confirmed that the sender of that threatening message is a career thief. But I wonder how he knew our family had that necklace. Jasmine recalled wearing that necklace to see Mike and revealing to him that her dad was an antique collector. Could that very thief be... Remember, he's been doing this for a long time. They call him the Phantom Thief. Surely he has a talent for sniffing out valuable items and evading the police. Unfortunately, it's the same this time. Actually, that young police officer could have caught him but he chose to save your sister. Our family owes him big time. Is that young police officer Jaden? Later, Jaden came to visit Jasmine at the hospital. Can you tell me the truth now? Is the FBI chasing a career criminal who is none other than Mike's dad? You're right, because he works in mysterious ways. I had to approach him through his son, Mike. So why didn't you arrest him when you had the chance? Weren't you just waiting for that moment? Because, because you were in danger. At that moment, I could only think about getting to you. <clears throat> All right, I'll give you that one. Can you tell me what you found out? Maybe I can help. Then Jaden told Jasmine that through spying on Mike, he discovered that Mike was his father's informant. Mike would scour rich girls, then point out the targets to his father who'd steal their valuables. That's why Mike had targeted Tiffany before. But as soon as he learned she was a fake rich girl and Jasmine was the real deal, he switched his focus to Jasmine. I am so sorry I kept the truth from you for so long. I really care about you, and I was trying to keep you from getting hurt. And you did anyway. I'm sorry. I hope you can forgive me. You did save my life after all. I think we can call it square. So, what's our next move then? I really don't know. I might have an idea. Elsewhere, Mike and his dad were scheming. I didn't expect that sissy Jaden to be in the FBI. Don't worry, I know how to deal with him.
The next day, reports of an antique auction flooded the news. A once-in-a-lifetime exhibition, all from one man's private collection, will be auctioned to the highest bidder. The collection includes antiquities from all over the world, including a necklace said to belong to Cleopatra. Its estimated value is over $100 billion. The streets were also plastered with billboards and banners about that auction. In the evening of the auction, all of VIPs of the upper class gathered in the hotel's main lobby to prepare for the big event. In addition, hundreds of security guards and police officers were hired to guard the auction jewelry 24-7. Before the start of the auction, Jasmine's dad gave a welcome speech to all the guests. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to welcome you all to today's event. As you know, I collect antiques as a hobby, so to share some of the joy this collection has brought me, the profits from today's auction will be donated to the orphanage. Sir, is it true that Cleopatra's necklace will also be auctioned today? That's right. However, it's not here. It's currently being kept in a very secure place that even a mosquito couldn't get through and will be presented during the final round. Aren't you afraid that the Phantom Thief, Master of Disguise, will steal it? Well, he can certainly try me. <laughs> the whole crowd burst into laughter without knowing, from a corner, an elegant lady was watching them all with a smirk on her face. At nine o'clock sharp, while the sounds of the auction echoed through the hotel's halls, someone in a black shirt and wearing a backpack appeared at the door trying to put a key in the lock. Freeze! Hands over your head! Busted, you thief! I'm... Uh, I'm... not... In the lobby, chaos reigned after it became known that the phantom thief had approached the treasure. Jasmine was extremely nervous, too. Before long, a police officer went onto the stage. Please don't worry. The thief was apprehended by the police while trying to open the door. The auction will continue as scheduled. Everyone felt relieved, and the room erupted into applause. At that moment, the elegant yet mysterious lady walked toward the elevator quietly, heading to the penthouse. She then swiftly snuck into the room and retrieved the necklace with ease. Those stupid cops must be bringing that fool down to the station right now. She then put the box into her bag and left the room. Suddenly, an old janitor bumped into her. I'm... I'm terribly sorry, miss. The elegant lady grumbled, then used the emergency exit to rush up to the rooftop. On the roof, a helicopter was already waiting, with Mike inside. Mike's dad quickly gave him the necklace. Just when the helicopter took off, policemen came rushing to catch him. We finally got you, you weasel! Ha <laughs> ha! I've still got the necklace. I win again, you fools. Oh, you mean this necklace? What? H how could you? It turned out that Jaden had swapped the box when they bumped into each other in the hall. Upon this admission, in the helicopter, Mike eagerly opened the box, which turned out to be just a jumping jack toy. No! After the police took Mike's dad away, Jasmine and her dad rushed to Jaden. Thank you so much for saving my daughter and still catching the thief. Thank you for all your help. We couldn't have caught him if you didn't fabricate this event. This whole thing was Jasmine's idea, and the event itself was fake. All the antiques auctioned tonight were real, and those proceeds will still go to charity. <laughs> we did it! You're right. We did it. Whatever happened with the other thief who got caught earlier? Oh, he was hired to distract the FBI, but we knew from the start he wasn't our thief. Luckily, the arrest announcement was just the thing we needed to get Mike's dad to make his move and to make him think he was going to get away with it. Now I just need to know how you switch those boxes so smoothly. Are you a magician, too? <laughs> nope. I'm just me. The next day, Jaden finally had some time alone with Jasmine, and it was finally time to tell her the rest of everything. It might not be my place to say, but I understand how you've been feeling. Trying to be someone? Heck, it's my job. But it's not your job to change to make other people like you. The right people are the ones who love you for who you really are. People like, uh, me. Jasmine was touched. She had so many things she wanted to say, but she was simply speechless. She turned to Jaden, and upon seeing just his side profile, she blushed. I, I, uh, are you okay? Jasmine was going to respond, but she hiccuped again. I think I know what to do. Hey, it's me again, Amy. Last time we spoke, I had made a huge discovery. But before we get to that, let me just remind you how we got here. My father's death left me completely devastated, so mom suddenly convinced me to travel to take my mind off of it. But instead of having a good time, I accidentally got stranded on this exotic island that's owned by a native tribe who do not like foreigners. 
Luckily, I met Silas, who helped me survive here, and we actually have gotten pretty close. <laughs> We're having so much fun that for a second I forgot that I had to go back, until I heard the rumor that my accident could have been staged. Would my own mother really have caused me to end up here? I needed to go home immediately to find out. And Silas was willing to help with all his might, but it's been a few days, and I haven't heard anything back from him. I waited eagerly, then impatiently for him to come. Finally, one afternoon, I heard a noise outside. I quickly went down to check. To my surprise, it wasn't Silas. It was Nora, and as usual, she looked annoyed to see me. I tried to tell her Silas wasn't here, but she pushed past me anyway and grabbed a stick to draw something. What are you doing? Abstract art? There. Island. I see. People. Then I got it. There is an island? With people? Can we get there? Yes. Can. Go. We can take a boat there? She nodded again and signaled me to follow her. Oh my god! I jumped with excitement! Maybe I was wrong about her. Nora led me to the shore, where she uncovered a small boat hidden behind a bush. Go away! Now! Go! Go! Nora pulled me towards the boat, sat me down, and started pushing the boat towards the water. Isn't it a little late to sail now? Wind! Wind faster! As we reached the edge of the tide, I realized, Wait, I need to tell Silas I'm leaving! Nora immediately became frustrated. Silas! With Dad! Danger! I didn't quite believe her, but I also didn't know if I'd get another chance like this. I couldn't imagine leaving Silas behind without a goodbye. I felt a pit in my stomach, but we will meet again someday. Definitely. Our family has all the money to rescue him later. Just hang on a bit more, hun. I'll go get help. Nora kept pushing me, and she's right. The patrol could detect me at any moment, so I started paddling away. See you again, Silas. But I only managed to go for a few feet, and then it's like my boat got stuck on something. I turned around to see... Silas? What do you think you're doing? Hey! Nora said that there is an inhabited island nearby, and I didn't want to miss the chance. Get off the boat! It's too dark and too dangerous to go out there by yourself. I'll go and check it out first and come back by morning to let you know if it's safe. Stay here! I was confident in his sailing ability, but it seemed Nora wasn't. She ran to cling to his arm, begging him not to go. Still, he ignored her and got on the boat. Nora glared at me before storming off, but I stayed on the shore for a moment, watching Silas disappear into the dark sea. Soon enough, the winds grew stronger and the rain started coming down hard. The storm lasted through the night. I stayed up, waiting in the cave where I spent my first night on the island. The rain stopped by dawn. I couldn't sit still and kept marching back and forth along the shore, looking for any signs of Silas. Nora returned soon after, yelling at me in her native tongue. I didn't understand anything she was saying, but I knew she was just as worried for Silas as I was. He'll be back soon, safe and sound. I trust him. And moments later, there he really was, coming back to shore. I couldn't help but run up and hug him as soon as he stepped out of the boat. I asked if he was okay and how he dealt with the rain, and Silas answered all of my questions with a tight hug, but soon we were interrupted by Nora. She shouted angrily and then stormed off. Silas chased after her and said some things that seemed to calm her down. That island is actually your family's gem mine. I've let them know that their boss lady is alive and well and ready to go home. Oh my god, really? They have their ship ready just a bit further offshore since it's dangerous to get close to the island, you know. Just sail out a little bit and they'll pick you right up. Yay! I'm finally leaving! We're finally... Silas stopped walking and looked at me sadly. Come on, let's go! I can't go with you. Nora will only let you go peacefully if I stay here. If I try to leave with you, she'll tell her father. My heart sank. We'll see each other again, I promise. How? Where there's a will, there's a way. Silas squeezed my hand and then let me go. I tried not to look back at him as I got onto the boat and set sail. I traveled for what could have been a few minutes, or a few hours. I couldn't tell anymore, until I was finally spotted by a larger vessel. They set out a lifeboat for me, and once on board, I was well taken care of by everyone. Offered food and warm clothes. But first thing first, I had to contact my family. I called home, and the person on the other end was my grandmother. She's as surprised to hear my voice as me hearing hers. Turns out, after all the shenanigans that happened after my father's death, my grandma had moved into our house to take care of things and wait for my return. We cried for a good ten minutes, and then I told her not to worry. I was safe, and that I'd be home soon. When I got home, Grandma, Nanny Emma, and my sister Briona rushed to greet me. As my sister hugged me tightly, I realized how much I had truly missed them, and also realized that my mom was really nowhere to be seen. No one made any mention of her in any way. I worked up the nerve to ask my grandma about her. Right when the police said there were signs of foul play in your disappearance, I already got suspicious. 
Then when Emma said it was your mother who suggested you go there and play those silly games, I immediately kicked her out. People are truly full of surprises. Do you really think Mom was masterminding all this? She was really trying to get both of you. Briona was lucky she forgot her passport. Don't be glum, dear. You still have me and Briona and Emma, too. We all love you and care about you very much. Now, go have some rest. It must have been a long journey for you. The next day, as soon as I got up, I went looking for my sister to confirm the things Grandma had said. When I found her, I couldn't stop the tears from spilling out. How could Mom have been the one to do this? Why would she do something like this to her own children? Amy, never listen to a story from one side only. Huh? Do you know something I don't know? Just don't jump into conclusions yet. She then excused herself to work and hurriedly left before I could ask anything else. I kept thinking about what Briona said, but couldn't come up with any other speculation. As I passed my parents' room, I noticed a box sitting outside the door. It's full of my mother's belongings. Nanny Amor is probably packing my mom's stuff out of here. Something in the box caught my eye. I opened it up and found that it was a photo album of me since I was a kid. And next to each picture is some love notes. This is definitely my mom's handwriting. My eyes landed on a photo of myself playing the piano. And my mother wrote, Sweet Pea playing my favorite song. She meant so well, but I was always the ungrateful, rebellious one. Was that why she stopped loving me? Did I do anything that terrible for her to want me gone? I suddenly missed her. I found myself taking the photo up to the piano room, some place I've never gone voluntarily. But as I reached for the doorknob, I heard voices coming from the inside. I peeked through the ajar door. Stop it. It's lucky enough that you didn't get caught. Just get out of here before it's too late. And throw all of my effort in vain? No way. My plan was going so well. How on earth could she survive? So, plan B. You need to secure that spot in the board of directors before Amy gets in the way, and I'll take care of the rest. But, oh god, them? They were behind all this? That night... I waited until I had everyone together to make an exciting announcement. Tomorrow, I'm officially going to start working for the company. I've been working on a proposal to pitch to the board of directors to gain their approval. That's wonderful, dear. Don't you think you need some sort of rest, sweetheart? You went through a big ordeal and... I'm ready. I'm totally fine. Well, Briona will also be returning to the company, and I'm glad I'll be able to help her out. The more hands, the better. I'm so glad you want to join the company. Later that evening, Nanny came into my room with a warm glass of milk. Oh, Emma, you always take such good care of me. Well, tomorrow's going to be a big day, and you need to get a good night's rest. Thank you. Finish your milk before it gets cold, sweetie. Good night. I hugged the warm milk glass and smiled at her as she walked out. Okay, one last revision and then I'll go prepare my outfit for tomorrow. But my eyes, so tired. Suddenly, I was woken up by a sound at the door. Then it slowly opened, followed by footsteps. Someone is walking towards me. She's looking for my documents. Aha! Time to wrap up your play, Emma. Oh, sweetie, go to sleep properly in bed. I'll, I'll help you tidy up. Cut the act, you witch. What do you think you're going to find here? My presentation for tomorrow? Joke's on you. It's a trap. But the milk, you've drank it all. You mean the glass of milk-flavored hypnotic? I've poured it down the drain. Sorry. Suddenly felt lactose intolerant. Bold of you to think you can fool me in my own house. I've seen everything. But why do you want to take me down that bad? Emma, aren't we? Because my daughter, Briona, deserves this company more than you. Before I could even process that information, Emma was rushing towards me holding a chloroform-soaked rag. Just as she backed me into a corner, the door flew open. My grandma and Briona rushed in, followed by the police, who restrained Emma right away. Briona ran over yelling, I told you I didn't want any part in your schemes. I would never, ever hurt my sister. Briona? Did you know she was your real mother already? Not until after mom was gone. Then Emma told me everything. Sensing my confusion, Briona explained that Emma had a fling with our father many years ago, but he wouldn't marry her because of her lesser status. She was already pregnant with Briona at the time, so our father allowed her to stay as a nanny. When my mom married our dad, she only knew that Briona was her husband's stepchild. I'm sorry I didn't come clean sooner. I didn't know what to do, because I didn't realize how far she was willing to go. But when I saw her messing with your drink, I knew that I needed to at least warn you. Thank you for always being on my side and telling the truth now. It must have been even harder for you to process all these. But don't worry, we can still make this right. Emma was trying to explain away her crimes as the police escorted her away in handcuffs. They assured us justice would be served. We got in touch with Mom, 
and by morning she was back home. After some more crying and apologizing and explaining and hugging, everything was as close to normal as it could be. I admitted that I didn't want the responsibility of running the company, but there was something I did want. I wanted to return to the Gem Island and oversee the exploration of the new mines. What I didn't say was the reason I really wanted to return. He was all I could think about as I embarked on my journey back to the island. We took a big boat as far as we could, before I needed to board a paddle boat to remain undetected once we reached native territory. Before I knew it, the island appeared on the horizon. My heart fluttered as I paddled faster and faster, waiting for the moment I could finally see Silas again. I was so focused on the land ahead that I didn't see the huge wave coming up from behind and overturned my boat. When I opened my eyes, I once again thought I was dead. This time, it was because the first thing I saw was an angel's face. Silas? Amy. Hi. I told you we'd see each other again. <laughs> but my moment in heaven was interrupted by the tribe's return. We were surrounded by the natives hollering and pounding their spears into the ground. A man angrier and more distinctively dressed than the rest stepped forward. This must be the chief. He shouted something to the others, and they grew quiet. He shouted some more, and all of their spears were pointed at me and Silas. I looked up at Silas. His face didn't change. He hugged me even tighter. Just when I thought the end was near, I heard a familiar voice. Nora was standing in between us and her father, shouting desperately. The chief's expression softened, and after some discussion between them, the chief gave another order, which made Silas very surprised. So, yes... Thanks to Nora and all the good deeds that Silas has done for the tribe. They spared our lives, but they ordered us both to leave their territory right away. So Silas and I moved to the main island, where my family's gem mine is located. Here we still have the beauty and simplicity of the wild lifestyle, while being connected to the rest of the world and helping manage our family business. So it's okay that we're not allowed to stay on the tribe's island. Not to mention, we still have a friend who often comes to visit. Nora had nagged her father to allow her to come over to our island every few days. It was at first because of Silas, but I think that she has set her sights on someone new now. <laughs> I was at the fish market, busy selling some crabs to a customer, when I turned around and saw this guy stealing our fish. He quickly ran away. I grabbed a stone, aiming it at the thief. But suddenly, a guy appeared and it hit him instead. Hey, what was that? Let go of me! Shouldn't you at least apologize? I looked over and the thief was nowhere to be found. The thief's escaped! You should apologize! But the guy just frowned and huffed off. Hi, I'm Serena, and I was brought up here, in this picturesque fishing town. When I was little, I lost mom and dad to the sea, so grandma raised me. We couldn't afford school for me. Instead, I helped grandma sell fish at the market to make ends meet. But things weren't always easy. Serena, you all right? Yes, I just wish people wouldn't steal. I know. Hopefully it was an extra stinky fish that will give them a tummy ache. That's Edward, my best friend since childhood. Edward's parents are also fishermen, so we naturally bond together and grew up inseparable. Later, Edward and I were busy closing when I heard murmurs and saw Mr. Elbridge, the fishing enforcement officer. Anyone caught poaching striped bass will be given a hefty fine. What? You gotta be kidding me! Sir, it's only considered poaching if they were caught out of season, which they're not! Oh, really? Do you have the legal documentation to overpower my decision? Nope. Thought as much. He's obviously abusing his power. At home, I told Grandma everything that had happened at the fish market. I know it's not fair, sweetie, but maybe one day you could study, become an amazing lawyer, and help the local fishermen. I want to help. I can tutor you if you'd like. That's brilliant! Since then, Edward stayed true to his word and tutored me. He was smart, kind, and so patient in explaining things to me. Time flies, and by the time I turned 13, I had the biggest crush on Edward, but I had no clue how he felt about me. I'll wash up. In the future, I'll always share the housework with you. What does he mean by that? Does he also have feelings for me? The next day, when Edward and I were having ice cream, some kids came in and started making fun of me. Do you know eating too much ice cream makes you fat? Oh, of course you don't, because you don't go to school. <laughs> she doesn't need to. She's still far smarter than you'll ever be. Why did you always stick up for me? Is it because you think of me as a... as a... As a little sister? I need to stop daydreaming. He doesn't have those kinds of feelings for me. Then, when I turned 17, something terrible happened. Grandma felt so sick that she passed away. At the funeral, I felt so alone with all the adults around, and Edward was nowhere to be seen. When everything was settled, Uncle Leon said he'd take me to live with his family in the city. I had to tell Edward, but when I got to his house, it was all locked up. 
So I quickly slid a note with my uncle's address under his door, then left for the city. As soon as we walked into the mansion, and Clara and Rachel were already there, frowning. Ugh, can you smell rotting fish? Ew, uh, get yourself some perfume, please. Enough, you will make Serena feel welcome here. Please prepare a nice room and everything Serena needs. Uh Uh-oh, not a good start. But then Uncle Leon had to go away for a business trip and asked Aunt Clara to find me a tutor as he was afraid going to school might be a shock for me. I was so excited to finally study and pursue my lawyer dream. However, all the tutors Aunt Clara found were terrible. I actually had to teach them simple sums. Meanwhile, Aunt Clara showered me with errands to run. Suddenly, I saw a blur of a dog and boy and... Smash! You idiot! How am I meant to cycle home with an injured knee? You're hearing this, Rex? How is she gonna cycle back home? Sorry, I'll take you home. I accepted his offer, mainly because I didn't exactly have much choice. What's your number? Well, that was quick. Stop daydreaming. I need it in case I decide to sue you. The guy, Henry, finally quit fooling around and gave me his number. When we got to the mansion, I caught sight of a familiar figure. Edward! I limped over and looped my arms around him. Who are you? Before I could respond, Henry shrugged his shoulders, then left. Edward then told me all about the tragic events that had happened to him. My father made a bad decision to go dynamite fishing. The Coast Guard caught him, but as he tried to run away, his boat smashed into a reef. We needed to move to the city for his treatment. Luckily, I got a scholarship into college here, so I can study and also care for Dad. I'm so sorry it's taken me this long to find you. That's okay, I understand. It all sounds terrible. What about you? So you live in that big mansion now? Is that guy your boyfriend? Henry? Oh, no, no. He's just good because, well, I wanted to tell you that I missed you and I love you, Serena. But you said I'm just a sister to you. I was 13. I didn't understand my feelings back then, but I do now. Serena, not having you by my side felt so empty. Will you be my girlfriend? We started dating and having Edward by my side felt so great. I was complaining about my terrible tutors when Edward suggested he become my tutor instead. That's a great idea. You'll need to prepare an atrocious CV for my aunt to hire you. And it worked. I don't expect you to get very far with this one. She is rather dumb. What's the deal with you two? She doesn't like having me here. Halfway through the lesson, Edward got a call from the hospital asking him to pay his dad's bills ASAP before his condition worsened. I was comforting him when Rachel barged in. Serena, go get me some ice. Oh, hello there. Get out! Who's that? Rachel, my cousin. Edward seemed distracted after that. I guess he was upset about his dad. He told me to continue with my worksheet and went to the bathroom. I finished the work, but Edward still hadn't returned. Was he lost in this massive house or something? I went to look for him and was shocked to see him and Rachel happily laughing together. Hi, Serena. I was just getting some water. I ignored Edward and continued studying by myself. Are you jealous? I was just being polite. Darn it, he knew I couldn't be mad at him when he smiled at me like that. But as we continued studying, I couldn't fully shake away my uneasy feeling. But the next day, I was waiting to study with Edward, when Edward won't be coming today. What? I asked her why, but she just walked off. As she left, I heard her ask the maid to bring fruits to Rachel and her new tutor. Huh? Since when did Rachel have a tutor? Sensing something was up, I sneaked over to Rachel's room and spotted, Edward? Serena, what are you doing over here? Oh, is stalking your new hobby now? I looked at Edward, but he just sat still, so I ran off with blurry eyes and an aching heart. Edward tried to call me, but I just ignored it. That night, he texted me and insisted on waiting for me. I wanted to hear him out, but I was still so angry at him. Serena, please. Your aunt told me I couldn't tutor you anymore and asked me to be Rachel's tutor instead. I need the money for my dad's treatment. I can't turn this amount of money down. Ugh, my aunt was such a witch. I'm so sorry. I would much rather be tutoring you. You're the only girl for me, but I can't lose this job. So let's keep our relationship a secret, okay? This was no big deal, right? It was me he wanted, not Rachel. Edward's birthday soon arrived, and we have a date at this restaurant today. I was excited when my phone buzzed. Sorry, babe, something's come up. Can't make it, X. It must have been something super important for him to cancel like that. But on my way home, I passed another restaurant and couldn't believe my eyes. Edward and Rachel were sitting together. Rage swarmed over me, and before I could stop myself, I charged in there. Edward, how could you? Jeez, what's up with you? He's not even your tutor anymore. Ask him how long he's known me for. Uh, I was just your tutor, that's all. 
I couldn't believe this, so I stormed off. I felt like such a fool for ever believing his lies. While running in tears, I bumped straight into Henry. You look like you just got dumped. <laughs> it was the straw that broke the camel's back, so I started crying louder. It's not me. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Please stop crying. Anything you want. Anything. How about the aquarium? It turns out the aquarium was just what I needed. Watching the fish was so relaxing, and Henry was surprisingly a lot of fun to be around. Your parents must be super easygoing to put up with you. Nope, my lawyer mom is way opposite. Oh wow, that's cool. It's my dream to be a lawyer. Is that so? My school's interviewing for a law foundation course. You should apply. A law foundation course, huh? Should I give it a try? I arrived home feeling better, but Aunt Clara wouldn't leave me alone with her usual mocking routines. You spoiled ingrate. Soon you'll be 18 and I can rid my hands of you. I had enough. So I decided to apply for the foundation program Henry mentioned. It was time to focus on my dream without any further distractions. I studied hard and went to the library for materials. Henry offered to help and even though I still found him childish sometimes, he was actually quite smart and knew loads about the law. One time, Henry invited me to come watch his debate team. Only when I showed up and spoke to Henry, I saw Edward walk in. My dad's ill, yet here you are with him? Serena can go where she pleases. It's okay, Henry. I got it. Rachel's just my friend. I love you, not her. I just need to earn enough money. Then I'll end this mess with Rachel for good. What he did was still hard to accept, but he was in a tough situation. I would be a terrible girlfriend if I didn't support him, right? Despite all this drama, I'd been studying hard, and now it was time for my interview. Only, on my way there, I saw a woman yelling at two students. Watch where you're going, you idiots! Excuse me, but this is a pedestrian crossing, hence the driver's fault for not stopping. How dare you speak the law to me, you little girl! Do you know who I am? But as everyone started buzzing, she had no choice but to drive off. <sighs> what happened? I explained it to him and pointed at the woman's car. He didn't say anything, but seemed quite surprised. We then went to the interview, but when I told the assistant my name, she smiled and said, You don't need to draw a number. Mrs. Shodden was impressed with your profile, so she wishes to interview you herself. It's best you follow the right procedure. I was a bit confused, but Henry knew better than me. Anyway, I had my interview with someone else, and I passed. Yay! Since then, I studied hard, and Henry helped me a lot. On my first oral exam, he even came along to encourage me. Only, as soon as I stepped into the room, I saw that rude woman standing there. Hang on, she's the judge! Nerves wriggled at me, but I kept calm and nailed the exam. But afterward, she charged over to me. Don't expect to pass from me, you manipulative girl, seducing my son to get into this college. Huh? Her son? Who? Mom, you can't do that. The exam's recorded. They'll see you're just being prejudiced. I insist you cut ties with a schemer at once. She humiliated me in front of a crowd and tried to smudge my impeccable reputation. No, she didn't. She was just telling the truth. Oh, and that day, I purposely called her in for an interview, but turned out you intervened. And ever since then, this snake was following you everywhere. So end it at once or leave. So this woman is Miss Shodden? And worse still, she's Henry's mom? Suddenly, Henry grabbed my hand and led me out of there. How dare you! You're ungrateful and spoiled! I only adopted you so I had someone to look after me in my old age. But you know what? You'll never be my son! Don't forget to take your meds twice a day. Seeing him talk back to his mother just to defend me, I couldn't help but ask, Henry, why did you help me so much? It's because mom was in the wrong, and seeing you getting pushed around hurts me a lot. Why, Henry? Because I like you a lot. Let me be there for you. Um, Henry, your mom shouldn't have spoken to you like that, but she was only angry because she cares about you. You should talk to her. I really hope things will turn out fine between them. Henry dropped me home, and now all I could think about was his love confession. To be honest, I do have feelings for Henry, but what about Edward? What about our years spent together? Suddenly, I got a text from Edward, asking to meet up. I guess it was time to sort this out. While waiting for Edward to order ice cream, I got a message from Henry, saying he was coming to my place for some great news. I asked him to come pick me up instead. This reminds me of our fishing village in summer and getting ice creams at the end of a sweltering day. I love you, Serena. I always cherish our memories together every day. Edward, actually, this isn't working. I think we should stop seeing each other. W what Why? I soon realized that something was wrong with our relationship. I just didn't have the courage to face it. We had a special friendship that I cherished and nurtured, but now I think it's time for me to accept the truth that we're not meant for each other. 
Bye, Edward. I wish you the best with Rachel. As I stepped out of there, I saw Henry waiting for me, and I instantly felt better. I made up with my mom. She apologized for what she said in her temper and told me that I would always be her real son. Henry, that's brilliant news! Right then, I got a message from Miss Shodden. Serena, I apologized for my behavior. I am most pleased Henry is getting to know such a righteous lawyer in the making. It looks like everything's falling into place. I arrived home, not expecting to see Rachel in a fit of tears. Mom, make her leave! This is all her fault! How dare you bewitch Edward! He's quit tutoring Rachel, and now my poor Rachel is distraught! I will keep on hiring you awful tutors and see how long it takes until you break. Ahem, <laughs> is that so? So Uncle Leon stopped Rachel's allowance and took Aunt Clara's credit cards off her. He also made them apologize to me. I told him about my foundation placement and he was so happy for me and offered to rent me an apartment near the college. It's time to live my dream. Now I just had one thing left to do. Take Henry to visit my hometown with me. This place looks familiar to me. <gasps> I know, I think I came here as a child. Yes, this weird little girl threw a stone at me and then got mad. I suddenly realized Henry was that tourist guy I met when I was 10. Yep, that would be me. Henry seemed surprised, then suddenly pulled me in. I guess some things are just meant to be. Now would you look at this girl, owning the stage, slaying all the performances. Guess what? That's me. I'm Rena, a talented beauty just like my mom, Demi Grande, the famous singer. Alongside being a dazzling diva, Mom also works as a vocal trainer at my school, the Gloria Rowley Arts Academy. Having the best teachers here to help me perfect all my skills sounds amazing, right? I excel at everything I do, being an MC, dancing, acting, mastering the piano. But still, I knew that none of these would really satisfy my mom. Because there is one not-so-tuneful problem. I'm tone deaf. At seven, once after I sang my little heart out in a vocal class, the teacher asked my mom when she came to pick me up. Oh, so Rena is really your daughter. What a shame she didn't inherit your voice. She's so off-key, we all had to cover our ears. But besides singing, I can still shine on stage in other ways. For example, being an MC at my mom's new album, Pre-Listening Party. Everything was going smoothly, right up until track number six, when the speakers and screen glitched out. Being the professional I am, I kept the crowd entertained with my charisma and dance moves. Rena, sing us a song too, please! Suddenly, the rest of the audience were nodding in agreement. I hesitated, but then decided to go with it. Just a short one. Can't be that bad. Cause I, I, I'm in the stars tonight. So watch me bring the fire, set the night alight. The audience started laughing. Oh no, if only Harry Potter could lend me his invisibility cloak right now. Please help! Suddenly... Hey, everyone, sorry for the technical issues. It seems to have affected the sound system also, causing voices distortion. So, not letting you all wait any longer, how about we do an acoustic performance for this next song, in which Arietta and I had the honor to feature with Miss Demi Grande. I assure you won't be able to get this experience anywhere else. The crowd cheers so loud. They must have forgotten about my disastrous performance. Thank God. Everyone was surely enjoying this. I mean, who could blame them? Hmm, look at him. My savior, not Harry Potter, but Brian Willis, the best singer from the vocal department of our academy. At the end of the show, I rushed over to get a photo with mom, but it seems she was busy. I guess I'd see her at home. <sighs> that evening, I was in my room looking at video clips from the party. When a video of me singing popped up, I scrolled through the comments. So Demi's beautiful voice was defo not inherited. She can dance and act, but she sure can't sing. <laughs> huh? It wouldn't make more sense if Ariana was Demi's daughter. Just then, Mom came in to thank me for the successful event and saw me disheartened by those words. It doesn't matter, Rena. Just enjoy your dancing or anything you like. Singing isn't for everyone. I couldn't get her words out of my head. I was a daughter of a diva, yet I sounded like a frog. No way. They can sing, then this diva's daughter can sing too. So I booked myself in for some online singing lessons, then signed up as the opening solo singer for the Academy's annual concert. As long as I practice hard, then I'd make it, right? Just like how I honed my other skills. Mom saw me practicing and tried to help, but no matter how hard I tried, I always came in at the wrong beat, sang as if I was reading, whispered when it was too low, cracked my voice when it was too high, and screamed out the words. 
Sweetie, why don't you prepare a dance instead? It's more of your thing. Leave the singing to our vocal department. Ariana will surely nail it. Ugh! Ariana this, Ariana that! I'm your daughter, not her! I must be able to sing! I was looking at the list of registered candidates and feeling nervous, but Brian appeared beside me. Oh, so you want to follow the singing path? If so, I'll always support you. He handed me some materials for basic vocal training. I was thinking about how sweet he was when Ariana and her friends passed by. Oh, so both you and Brian are trying out for the opening solo? <laughs> nah, just me, obviously. How could Brian compete against his girl? <laughs> Ariana is his girl? So Brian didn't like me at all. He was just being polite. Both him and mom thought I was just a dud and Ariana was the headline act? So I practiced all day and night to prove them wrong. I also posted a short clip of my singing on the forum and said, if people voted for me, I'd provide a mega performance full of singing and dancing. The next day, the school announced the top two tied opening solo candidates, Ariana and me. I was so excited. But then I heard the murmuring. You voted for her? For real? I just want to see how bad her voice can get. Don't be so mean. She's Miss Grande's daughter. Of course my vote goes to her. Suddenly, Enid, this usually timid girl, appeared and congratulated me. Don't listen to them, Rena. I believe only someone as well-rounded as you deserves to represent Gloria Rowley's Art Academy. Enid's kind words really gave me strength. Now I just had to keep on practicing. I'm so near to the goal now. That weekend was the final rehearsal before the selection round. I was extremely nervous, and this was the first for me to feel this bad on stage. I wasn't as comfortable and confident as I was MC or a dancer. I tremblingly sang, but all I could think of was my itchy throat. I couldn't hit the notes at all. Had I practiced the wrong techniques? No way. I followed all the instructions Brian gave me. If you don't really want to do it, don't push yourself. I just feel a little under the weather today, so I didn't want to push it too hard. Don't worry, I've got a wonderful performance in store for everyone on D-Day. Oh, Brian! Where have you been? We need to run over our duet one more time. Ariana again? She must be trying to pick a fight with me! I glumly looked around the auditorium and saw everyone from different departments busily preparing for their amazing performances. They were all passionately practicing. Meanwhile, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. How on earth could I save this performance? I was at my all-time low when Enid appeared next to me. Hey, um, do you want to team up? I have the vocals and you possess the greatest stage presence. Seeing my confused face, she continued, I've always admired you, and it's really sad to see you like this. We all just want a successful event for our academy, right? I've tried so hard. Everyone, especially my mother, is really looking forward to my performance. I cannot fail. So I agreed to let Enid help me lip sync for the audition. Just for once. I'll recover in time for the real concert anyway. The audition started off great. Enid was backstage singing, and turns out her voice is Taylor Swift level amazing. It's even more soulful than Ariana's. Seeing the crowd's stunned faces, I confidently gave the performance my best shot. But then I suddenly noticed the crowd's confused looks and realized something. Enid has stopped singing! Panicked, I turned on my mic to sing, but my voice came out as an off-key tremble. I sounded terrible, but I managed to finish a song and then rushed backstage. As soon as I stepped backstage, I saw my mom and some of the other students, including Brian and Ariana, gathered around Enid, who was sobbing, saying that her mic broke and that she didn't mean to let me down. Enid, what are you doing here? I can't, Ari. Please forgive me. I can't do it. Even though you're my sister, I can't. What are you talking about? Wait, you two are sisters? Oh, I see. So Ariana teamed up with Enid to sabotage me. I knew it wasn't Ariana's favorite person, but this was low, even for her. Now I was a laughingstock to everyone. It had been a horrible day, so I just wanted to curl up in my room and be left alone. Only, Mom knocked on my door. Sweetie, can we talk? I was too sad to answer, and Mom must have been mad at me, as she didn't try knocking again. I can't blame her. I would too if I was a mom. A tone-deaf daughter like me really embarrassed her. As expected, the next day at school, everyone was buzzing about three hot topics. The first one being my lip syncing. Rena can't even sing properly. Her performance was a joke. <laughs> but she's truly a great dancer. She's better off focusing on that. The second, that they suspected Ariana of being the mastermind who set me up. And the last one was a surprise at how awesome Enid's voice was. That whole morning, I couldn't escape the gossiping. Worse still, clips of my lip syncing were posted online, and now the Academy had been accused of favoritizing a celeb's daughter over talent. 
I never meant for it to affect my mom and the school's reputation. I know I needed to try and fix this, so I decided to apologize in front of everyone during lunch break. It was my idea to lip sync, and I know it was dumb. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done it. But before my friends could reply, Enid spoke up. Rena, I didn't mean to blow the lip sync plan. Ariana begged me to, but I refused. It was a completely unintended incident. Please, drop the act. I never asked you to do that. I didn't record our convo because I trusted you. Because you're my sister. But come on, Ariana, you know what you said. Oh, you didn't record it? Then it's a good job I did. Ariana then pulled out her phone and played a video. Why were you lying about the lip syncing? Relax, you should be thanking me for helping you eliminate a rival. I gasped in shock and so did everyone else. I never thought that sweet, timid Enid could secretly be so conniving. Enid couldn't play innocent anymore, so she broke down and told everything. Okay, I did it, but none of y'all understand what it's like having Ariana for a sister. I have a better voice, but I can't compete with her. She's beautiful and everyone loves her, while I'm always the black sheep. Not to mention my migraine medication made me put on these unlosable weights. So I felt too insecure to stand on stage. I just wanted Ariana to taste failure for once, to feel what I feel. So I used Rena to beat her, but the mic messed up, and I took my chance to put the blame on Ariana instead. Everyone was still trying to process all these shocking revelations when a boy stood up. Voila, everything is clear. It's just some selfish scheme of one person. GR Arts Academy is full of awesomely talented students. Stop the dumb rumors. Turns out, that guy has been live streaming the whole thing. Now that the case was closed, both mom and the academy's credibility was restored. <sighs> but this drama is still too much for me. I needed a breather. As I listened to the birds chirp around me, I began to feel calmer. But then I saw Ariana coming over. I'm sorry about my sister. It's true I'm a bit jealous of you, but I'm not that spiteful. <laughs> jealous? Of me? But you're pretty. Have a superstar voice and everyone in school loves you. How about you, huh? You're beautiful, multi-talented, you can MC, act, and dance. All I can do is sing. Okay, so turns out Ariana isn't as unapproachable as I thought she was? She's actually... nice. Maybe I shouldn't have been so quick to judge her. Suddenly, Brian charged over to us with an alarmed look on his face. Calm down, Tiger. I'm not harming your girl. She's all yours now. Your girl? Why are you here and not at home? I'm not ready to face mom just yet. She must hate having a tone-deaf daughter. Rena, you were wrong for lip-syncing. But it's not your fault that you can't sing. Singing isn't something mandatory for all human beings, is it? But do you know how proud Miss Grande is of you? She always brags to us about your achievements and plays us your performance videos. Brian's wise word has made me feel a lot better. He was right. I shouldn't have lip-synced. I should have just embraced the things I'm actually good at, and just been myself. After talking to Brian, I felt ready to go home and face mom. Everyone expects me to sing as well as you, and I too honestly thought that if I kept practicing, I'd be able to. But the truth is, I'm just not a singer, and I never will be one. I know you're mad at me, but I can't be like Ariana. I'm so sorry. Sweetie, I never want you to be anything other than you. I'm so proud of you. And I'm sorry if my actions ever came across differently to you. I wasn't mad at you. At all. I really just wanted to give you a hug last night. But I didn't hear anything from you and thought you might need some time on your own. So, you're not upset that I'm not a singer? Of course not, silly. I just want you to be happy and pursue whatever you love. I'm glad Mom and I had cleared things up, but I couldn't stop thinking about Enid and why she did what she did. So, that evening, I texted her. The lip sync was a bad call, but it made me realize that no one's good at everything. We all have our own strengths. Mine isn't singing, but yours is. Your voice is truly angelic, so don't let anything stop you from doing what you love. I'm glad we're okay now. You're right. Being a singer angel doesn't require a stick figure. Thank you. And I'm sorry. I'm relieved that's all sorted. And Enid learned her lesson and now realizes just how amazing she is. I was anxiously waiting backstage for my performance. Luckily, I had Brian by my side to support me. Even if he was fussing a bit too much... I'm only the backup dancer. Go check on Ariana. She's the star of the show. I'm not the one on his mind. You're his one and only priority. Hey, he even gave up his chance to sign up for opening performance for you. Huh? Y you really did that for me? Your priority? S since when? Yes, since I saw you emceeing on the first day of school. I woke up in shock to find my face covered in bandages. <laughs> my face! This can't be happening! Right, Callum? Tell me this is not happening! <laughs>
right after the doctor entered the room. Miss, unfortunately, the glass from the car window has caused extensive trauma to your skin. As the doctor continued talking, I felt myself zone out and began to panic. My face is everything. Without it, my singing career is over. Ash, it's gonna be okay. I'll help you find a way to return to the stage. I promise. Hi, I'm Ashley, and I had a dream of becoming a famous singer. I used to sing on the streets to collect a few dimes. Then one day, a handsome and polite man approached me. I'm Callum, a talent scout, and I believe with your angelic voice and rare beauty, you have the makings of a star. It was love at first sight, and not only did I gain a manager, but also a hot boyfriend. He arranged for me to perform at cafes, bars, and restaurants. It was nonstop. I enjoyed it, but I have to admit I was also, uh, exhausted. And that's when Callum suggested that I use autotune and lip sync to save my throat. Babe, I know this ain't right, but you're burned out and I can't bear seeing that. You know, it's not forever. I think that way you can focus on dressing up and letting people admire that gorgeous face of yours. Hearing this did make me feel sad, but Callum knew what he was talking about, so I trusted him. While the fire inside me to perform on a professional stage still burned strong. Then one day, he told me some unexpected good news. No more small gigs. The famous company Dream M Entertainment is holding auditions to find their next big star. I've taken care of everything. You just need to be 100% confident in performing. This was it. My time to shine has finally come. But then that evening, while driving home and practicing singing, I had an uncontrollable coughing fit. I lost focus of the road for a split second and didn't see the incoming car until everything went dark. And the next thing I knew, I was waking up at the hospital looking like Frankenstein and certain that my big dreams were now in shatters. After two months in the hospital, most of my scratches healed, but only a deep cut scar remained on my cheek. Just a few days more until the audition, and I couldn't show up looking like this. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Can makeup cover it? Or maybe a mask? There must be something. But the doctor said I can't wear makeup until it's fully healed, as it might cause an infection. <laughs> and if I went on stage in a mask, people would certainly raise questions. Then Callum's eyes suddenly darted to the photo on the shelf. Ash, here's your answer. Get your sister to be your double until your wound heals. Y you mean Bridget? That freak? No way! Yeah, I do have a twin sister, but we aren't close, for sure. My parents divorced when we were seven, and the courts decided I'd live with dad and Bridget with mom. I had a great life with dad as he bought me any outfit I wanted. But Bridget was a tomboy and didn't care about fashion. The last time I saw her, she was wearing all faded clothes. I guess the whole moody, loner, frown-like-she's-constipated look was her vibe. I tried talking to her at college, but she always snubbed me. And just like that, we ended up being strangers, despite being siblings. And now you say I have to grovel her for help? No! I get that you guys aren't close, but surely you can put your differences aside for this once-in-a-lifetime chance at your dream? <sighs> I suppose Callum has a point. So I agreed. Only it wasn't that simple, as I didn't have Bridget's number and she refused to use social media. You know, to match her cool, unbothered vibe. Ugh. Hang on. I remember her scowling at me behind the counter at the Yo-Yo fast food once. Perhaps she still worked there? I immediately disguised myself and headed there. Oh, there she is. I started hovering around her and explained what had happened, then asked her if she'd be my double for the audition. But she didn't bother to care. Get out the way. I can't perform looking like this. Please, this is everything to me. It's none of my business. I have work to do. See, I can't just give up like this. So I ordered food and sat there and waited for her to change her mind. It was closing time already. I was about to leave when I saw Bridget and her boss quarreling with each other. My gosh, this is why it's never good to hire teenagers. I only hired you because you begged for the job. I I'm sorry, sir. I'll... <sighs> Darn it. Starting today, you will work without pay for three months. No, sir, I need money. You didn't even pay me last month. Hey, what are you doing? Go. You can work elsewhere. Don't be here with a scumbag. What? And you get lost before I report you to the cops. What you aiming at? Why do you have to work here anyway? Doesn't mom give you a big enough allowance? Don't pretend like you care. How could a spoiled girl like you ever understand? What do you mean by that? Ugh. Anyway, you need money, right? I can help you. Bridget didn't answer, but I saw through her a Miss Frosty persona. 
if you replace me until I'm recovered, then I'll pay you. A big check worth 10 times what you're making here. By the way, only two of us and my manager know about this, so don't worry. Then I gave her my number and told her to message me when she made a decision. She reluctantly took it, saying nothing, and just left. But that evening, a message from an unknown number popped up. Okay, I'm in. You better pay me right. I immediately called Callum and told him the good news. Now it's time to turn Bridget into a temporary me. Normally, Callum and I keep our relationship low-key to maintain professionalism. And that's the same now. We're keeping it a secret with Bridget. Callum made it clear to Bridget that all she needed to do was to look pretty and lip sync. But geez, that girl could only moan. This crop is too tight and constricting. Stop scratching like a monkey. I showed her how to stand straight and walk like a diva. And it shocked me when she said she'd never heard of skincare. No wonder her skin was as dry as the Sahara Desert and her pores were as deep and large as black holes. No worries. The witches here will give you a magic transformation. Wow. She looked exactly like me, just without the wound. (sighs) Even Callum was impressed. He instantly offered to help her into the car and drive her to the audition. Mm, I guess it made sense for Callum to keep her on our side. Now is not the time for stupid jealousy, Ashley. I disguised myself as Bridget's assistant and nervously waited backstage. The audition was such a nightmare. Bridget's lip syncing didn't match the pre-recorded audio, and she danced like she had two left feet. Finally, the performance ended, and the first judge to comment was David Knight, a.k.a. the music wizard, master composer, and lord of melodies. Oh, I know this guy. He's sure a demigod in real life. Your singing was dismal, and your dancing was catastrophic. Did you get lost looking for the bathroom and wander on stage by accident? Having a pretty face isn't enough to keep you here. The judge sitting next to David suddenly grabbed a mic. Wait, he's the CEO of Dream M. <clears throat> Uh, you're wrong, David. Beauty is also talent. She's a diamond in the rough and only needs a little polishing to shine. After the show, Callum was overjoyed as he informed Bridget that she'd become a talent at Dream M and would soon become an A-lister. I was so excited, too, that I flung my arms around Bridget, but she coldly pushed me away. Enough for today. Since then, the three of us agreed that Bridget would perform on stage while I would record at the studio. The bad side was about putting up with David, the difficult judge at the audition who was in charge of my recording session. The only thing going for you is your face, so why hide it behind that mask? If you must know, I didn't have time to apply any makeup. Satisfied much? Sorry, what you say? It was too early in the day to deal with such a jerk, so I stayed silent and focused on the session. Hmm... Your singing has improved significantly since the audition. It just still lacks some emotion. Haha, <laughs> thanks. My debut was just days away, but things didn't go so well. Bridget had no sense of style and appeared in the fashion column Worst Dress Lists, shaking like a leaf on stage and jumbling her words when facing impromptu interviews. So I had to set up a crash course for Bridget, but this time I taught her simple, easy-to-remember things instead of big stuff like last time. I showed her how to pair basic outfits, how to deal with the press, and most importantly, I still guaranteed her regular pay. Ash, you, um... You've helped me a lot, and I, anyway, so, thanks. Oh my, she was so awkward, but that was sweet. I could gradually feel that we were actually sisters. Bridget, the main effort was still yours. Keep it up. Soon, the company began to promote Bridget, and her reputation skyrocketed. All the while, my relationship with Callum took a nosedive. At previous events, Callum used to pamper me and bring me my favorite foods. But now he just brought Bridget's favorites. He never left her side, and they were always having cozy chats. So one day, I decided to talk straight to him about this. Callum, I have to admit that I feel kind of uncomfortable, as you're a bit too close to Bridget. Babe, I got you. I have to pretend I'm with Bridget as everyone thinks she's you. I'm doing this for your own good, so stop overthinking. Will you do it for me? I know, but I really feel insecure since I got this scar. It's like I've lost everything. Don't worry, the scar will eventually heal. The most important thing right now is you stay calm and get through this time. Ah, right. I suddenly forgot that I was working for a greater goal. I tried convincing myself that they were just dedicated to their work and that my wound would be healed soon and I could go back to being me. I still go to the hospital every week for follow-up and treatment. It's faded, hasn't it? 
I needed to escape, so I went to the studio to sing my heart out. I was certain no one would be there at this time of night, but turned out I was wrong. Surprisingly, on seeing me, that dude didn't shoo me away. Instead, he was actually pleasant. A night owl too, huh? Start singing then. I'll give you my valuable opinions. I was shocked by this approachability, but I rolled with it. David was many things, but there was no denying he was extraordinarily talented that made huge hits. I sang, and he gave me some useful tips and pointers. I believed you'd be too haughty to listen to my guidance, but it turns out I was mistaken. Well, I found you annoying at first, but I appreciate your help and I value your feedback. It seems there's actually a nice guy behind the ogre front. S sorry, what you say? I won't say it twice. Then I started humming a few lines from a song I'd written, but didn't realize I was singing it out loud until it was too late. That song is good. Whose is it? Uh, actually, I wrote it. No need to be mocking. No, I'm not at all. I didn't know you had a talent for songwriting. Come here. Let me hear the whole song. So we sat down together, and surprisingly, our vibe matched each other perfectly. Actually, you're the first person to take my ability seriously. Sorry? Hey, stop pretending! Actually, I'm not pre- Gradually, Bridget seemed to figure out how to act like me, and her popularity grew. She was no longer sluggish and paid more attention to her appearance. Even Callum mentioned how he could only distinguish us by my wound. From then on, Callum said Bridget could do it herself, so they went to the shows without me. This feeling is making me squirm. On the one hand, I want Bridget to do well to help me out. On the other hand, I'm also feeling a bit resentful that I was replaced so easily. I also miss the way Callum used to care about me. But I remember what he said the other day, and I know I shouldn't be acting like a child. So I tried to distract myself by doing what I love the most, singing. Everybody was packed with Bridget's show, so this world is mine. Woohoo! I was in the studio practicing my new song when suddenly David barged in. Can you explain to me why you're here whilst also performing on TV live? W why are you here? Does it even matter now? Who really are you? I begged him to keep quiet. Then I frantically took my mask off and told him everything. I mean, everything. As I was too shocked to make any excuses. This is insane. I know it isn't right, but, but I, I promised once my wound healed, everything would go back to normal. Singing is everything to me. David remained silent for a while, then blurted out, All right, if what you said is true, I will keep your secret. And one more thing, if you really like singing and songwriting, I can continue to help you. What do you say? Y yes, yes, totally, yes. And don't you dare lie to me. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Yeah, swear to God. Finally, it was the follow-up day. As the doctor finished the examination, I saw him frown. I'm sorry to inform you that the scar cuts too deep. It may fade over time, but I'm afraid it won't go completely. At least in two years. I broke down. This couldn't be happening. <laughs> Not knowing what else to do, I decided to go and find Callum. But when I arrived at his house, I saw that he wasn't alone. Bridget and Callum were sitting together and slowly... Leaning for a kiss. Hey, what's the matter with you? Don't think you're better because you help everyone you see. Oh, so now we're being honest? Fine, my turn. I didn't listen to what everyone said about you and still became your friend. Turns out they're all right after all. Like father, like daughter. What are you talking about? You... You you knew everything? Yeah, I'm not dumb, and that's not all. Now I finally believe my dad died in that fire because of your dad's negligence. His dad... Was among the victims in that fire? My feet wouldn't move, and my muscles were constricting from shock for a while before I could drag my heavy heart and crumbled thoughts to somewhere else. I'm sorry about his dad, but I'm in pain too. It's not just because the boy I like was cruel to me, but also because, as it turns out, he's no different from everyone else. Devastated, I unknowingly brought myself to the gymnasium. Wait, my self-defense club? They're still practicing? Wow, hard at work already. Amazing. Shut up! Why are you even here? Then their insurrection began. Just quit already. We're not here to entertain you. Your careless, irresponsible behavior has said enough. You don't even know why we need to learn how to defend ourselves. You never cared about us in the first place. Don't even bother pretending. Leave. Okay, fine. I won't stay where I'm not welcome. Bye, then. Home at last. I was gonna take my frowny face straight to my room, but couldn't hide it from Dad. Sweetie, why the long face? How are you so cheery all the time? 
Life's beautiful, and we get to see it every day, no? I hate it. I hate to see you get all the blame while doing nothing but good deeds. How everyone's mocking us. But above all, I hate how you always have that happy-go-lucky smile. Even though people treat you like the butt of their jokes. I hate trying to be a hero like you said. But I can't stand pretending to be weak either. I hate everything! Honey, they might think the worst of us. But that doesn't mean we have to be so pessimistic and indifferent. Then we're no better than them, aren't we? You can't change the way people see you or be anyone but yourself. Perhaps one day we might manifest something good to the universe. But first, we need to be good people. His words actually woke up something in me. Was I wrong about everything all this time? In the following days, Aaron and I ran into each other a couple of times. But we both avoided eye contact. <sighs> That one's a dead end, but a boy is not my biggest problem. Now I want to flip the script and start over. But from where? Ah, oh, I know. But wow, everyone immediately got their torches and pitchforks ready at the sight of me. Good afternoon, y'all. What you said the other day got me thinking, and I'm sorry. I want to help, for real. Of course, only if you want me to. Come on, I'm already at the bottom. Give me a chance to go up, huh? No loss for you anyway. They seem convinced, so I got down to business right away. What? You're already cowering? I only swung my arm. Hmm, looks like what they've been practicing wasn't working. So I decided to put them on a strength-building regimen alongside one-on-one -on -one sessions with me. On top of that, I built each member's profile detailing their weaknesses and how they should be improved. Most of us aren't tall or athletic. How about you show us how to use weapons like pocket knives, nunchucks, and axes? Seriously? <clears throat> Sorry, but swords are only as good as the women who wield them. You'll most likely hurt yourself if you carry those things around. So, I came up with the idea of teaching them self-defense using familiar items like backpacks, pens, and heels. And this look? I actually wanted to get rid of it. But I decided to keep it up since this is what most girls wear. This should show them how to protect themselves in the most unexpected situations. Danger won't wait for you to change into appropriate attire. Besides, I'm totally serving this look. Then more students joined our club. I see geeks, nerds, goth chicks, and even popular cheerleaders. Hmm, what brought them here? Hazel once mentioned that they all had a reason to learn self-defense. So, I decided to sit everyone down one day. Alright, no practice today. I want this club to not only empower us girls physically, but also be a safe space to, you know, talk about ourselves and our problems. Okay, who wants to go first? I broke the ice by sharing everything that's wrong with my life, why I had such a slappable face, and all things false about my family that everybody liked to say. The girls seemed quite bewildered, then began contributing to the conversation. Well, for me it's my mom. She got divorced recently, and now she's doing really questionable midlife crisis stuff. I mean, she can do whatever she wants, but I'm still very angry with how she's handling things. So my therapist said I should take up some physical activity to deal with my anger issue. It seems to work, so far. I feel powerless at home too, so I thought learning how to fight would give me the strength I need to stand up against my stepdad. Yeah, I felt helpless many times before, like whenever I reported my stalker to the police, and they said there's nothing they can do. But practicing with you guys made me feel strong and confident, no matter how brutal it can be. Totally. With what we learned here, I felt like one day we could both reverse stalk our stalkers. Jeez. I only wanted to take advantage of these poor girls at the beginning to get out of trouble, and almost abandoned them. What was I thinking? And since then, they'd all got stronger and seemingly more confident through each lesson. Every girl had several bruises, but the brightest smiles were always on their faces. We must have looked like the happiest thugs. One day, when I was enjoying my meal, Betty came and said she wanted to have a word with me in private. I put aside our differences, but then she said this. I'll cut to the chase. Your violent little club is getting more popular and taking away people's attention from what's truly important. Me? Uh, my campaign. I don't follow. We exist in completely different spaces. I have nothing to do with your campaign. You know what I'm talking about. All that everyone cares about now is your girl fight club. I'm just concerned that you're planting seeds of violence in other students' minds. That's all. Gosh, I don't need to explain to you, of all people, what I'm doing. If you're worried nobody cares about you anymore, maybe, just maybe, they're tired of your sob story and useless anti-bullying measures. Ugh, you're wasting my time. However, I couldn't have anticipated disaster struck right that evening. A 
One other person was complicit that day, but I was hesitant to point her out because I feared her retribution. But now your love and support have given me strength to do the right thing. That girl was none other than Jamie. She even blatantly lied to the principal that she had self-defense club. But they're nothing but a bunch of thugs in disguise. I am truly terrified for myself and everyone else in this school. Members of the club were on my side. Still, most people chose to believe Betty, including the teachers. And so they shut us down. <sighs> Am I on the right track after all, or should I just return to my old, quiet life? The next day, the whole club came to comfort me. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. Never mind her. She already had her army of sims go to war with Team Betty. But from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. I couldn't have done anything without you guys. It's my fault the club shut down. Jimmy, we became fighters thanks to you. You're a real one. I was walking home, feeling much better than yesterday, when I saw the last person I want to see. Betty who's with her bullies? Betty, you okay? Never better. See, I'm with my friends. What? Didn't these guys beat you up? We buried the hatchet. Friends for life, right guys? You talk too much. What now? What's the problem? Aaron came flying out of nowhere and pulled me out. Then they tried to pick a fight with him, but Betty prevented it. Then we walked together, no word spoken. When a thank you was on the tip of my tongue, he already went in another direction. Later that day, I found out that Betty owed money to them and almost couldn't pay them back, hence their intimidation. Now that the issue was settled, they're back to being friends. Their friendship made me cringe. I shouldn't bother myself with it since I already knew Betty wasn't all pure and innocent then. The next morning, Betty dragged me aside as soon as I came to school. Looking for your favorite scapegoat? Where are your bestie assailants? Shockingly, she wanted to apologize. Jimmy, I promise it won't happen again. She even said that it was Aaron who told her to change her ways. Welp, it didn't matter anymore. Pretty please, don't tell anyone about this. My parents would shave all my hair and use my shiny bald head as a mirror if they knew. Whatever, I'm no snitch. But how long do you think you can get away with this? People's sympathy will run out one day. Are you going to ask them for another punch to have another sob story? Then I stormed off, leaving her frozen on the spot. <sighs> It's Monday, meaning I was supposed to attend club meeting. But now that we're banned, I don't have anything better to do. So bored. Suddenly, I saw smoke rising from afar. That direction. It's the gym! I acted on instinct and ran towards it. As I approached the fire, I realized it was much bigger than I thought. Worse, I heard someone scream for help from inside. So I hit the fire alarm, but as soon as it sounded, memories of the fire in the past and my dad came rushing to me. It's keeping my feet rooted there. At this point, many people heard the alarm and came to help extinguish the fire. What you standing there for? Give us a hand! Ayo! Did she cause this? Out of the way! Useless! Images of Dad's scarf filled my head. I just want to explode. Is history repeating itself? Are people gonna die? Jimmy! 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 I was awoken by the calls of my friends from the club. They're helping too, but this much water and sand couldn't do much to this ever-growing fire. In a split second, I tore out a piece of my shirt, dipped it in some water, then wrapped it around my face before running straight inside the burning building as everyone else gasped at me. The black smoke covered my field of vision. I dashed further inside and showed any survivor I saw the way out. Shockingly, I found Betty, shivering and cowering. I called out her name a couple of times, but no response. Without thinking, I carried her out in my arms. As soon as we got out, I saw Aaron trying to tell me something, but I didn't hear a single word as I was fixated on looking for more survivors in there. Suddenly, fire truck sirens took me out of it and I stopped. Firefighters are here! My dad's here! They swiftly took care of the rest. But my dad's uniform caught on fire, which had to be taken off. That's when he inadvertently revealed his scarred arm. When the fire had been put out and no one was left inside, I rushed over to give my dad the biggest hug. Dad, you're all right. I finally did it. Then some townsfolk came to pick up their kids, and I saw them looking at my dad's scar with this stupid, aghast look on their faces. What are you looking at? You all thought of firefighters' bodies flawless? This? It's what he got for trying to save you and your family in that tragic fire and all these years. He should have been praised as your hero, but instead, all he got in return is deformity and your ungrateful ass. Dad had to hold me back to stop any further colorful words from coming out of my mouth. Poof. They need to hear that. It took a while before a few people approached my dad, asked him how he was doing, and apologized for mistreating him, as well as disregarding his contribution to the town. 
Hey, my emotional outburst helped. After that incident, I spent a few days at home. The girls told me that Betty admitted to setting the gym on fire so she could play the victim and be the center of attention once again. Betty only contacted Aaron because she wanted him to save her specifically, but the fire was unexpectedly huge and spread like, well, wildfire. Tragically, Aaron didn't make it in time while Betty was completely unaware of other students in the gym at that time and accidentally trapped them. There's going to be dire consequences for her no matter what. That evening, I answered the door to see a familiar face. Hi. Hi. How are you holding up? I was so worried. Wait, let's go somewhere else. I didn't take Betty's text seriously until I heard you running into the fire. Please forgive me. I'm sorry about the last time we spoke. I was so angry I said all those wrong things about you. I'm very sorry about your dad as well. It's okay, and my family and I should have been thanking your dad and his team. Without them, my mother wouldn't have been around now. That's all right. I wasn't being completely honest either. The truth is, I... I know. Ever since the day we fell out, I kept an eye on you still. I know that's creepy, but I just wanted to know how you're doing. Believe it or not, I secretly came to your self-defense club a couple times and saw what good deeds you're actually doing. And now, would you give me the chance to get to know the real you? Bro, you're sure you want to know me? I've seen that you're more than willing to ditch me and help just about everyone in need, and I'm tired of that. Besides, aren't you into nice, cute, petite girls? Says who? Is this about what I said in English class? It's just so the girls would stop. And the other thing, guess it was a bit misleading, but that's how I instinctively act to everybody because I thought it's what any good person would do. When you finally become my girlfriend, you'll get the special Aaron Taylor treatment. Ahem, that's still not my biggest achievement this school year. I got to be friends with these amazing people. And even though I'm not a true hero, I found a way to help them overcome some of their problems. Would you believe it? I was really happy I did that, and I would be happy to do it again. Wow! This place was like a life-size dollhouse! It was huge and... Whoa! Was that a whirlpool bath? I was in heaven! <laughs> Slow down, dear. OMG! You even have an indoor badminton court? I love badminton! This was the most amazing house ever! Hey! I'm Helen, and I grew up in a normal house with a normal family. I love my parents and life was great and all, but the one downside was the long journey to my new high school. My mom, Grace, said she had the answer to this and suggested I go and stay with my Aunt Lucy as she lived closer to the school. Okay, so I'd never met Lucy before. Actually, until Mom mentioned her, I didn't even know I had an aunt. Mom explained that Aunt Lucy moved to Canada for business and had only returned to the U.S. recently. This was the first time I had to live so far away from my parents, so I was kind of worried I'd get homesick. But one advantage was my bestie, Madeline, lived right nearby. Awesome, right? Besides, this place was dope. I couldn't stop gawking at that badminton court. Seriously, it was bigger than my house. Aunt Lucy, I guess you must really like badminton. Yes, many people think it's just a backyard game, but it's a true sport to me. Wow, it was a rarity to meet someone with the same taste as me. We chatted for ages about our interests. Lucy was so easy to talk to, and I honestly felt like I'd known her for years. I would love to become a pro badminton player, but mom thinks I should keep it as a hobby and find a more stable career. I see, but don't let others discourage you. The true passion is worth pursuing. Let me arrange a training schedule for you. Now, try this. Oh, how do you know I like lobster linguine? At first, living with Lucy was like being in a dream world. She pampered me, bought me clothes I wanted, and cooked the most delicious dishes. But beneath the shine, there was also a darker side. Lucy was super strict. I mean, major general level strict. I had to wake up at 5 a.m. each morning for training, run laps of it for an hour, and hit 50 shuttlecocks over the net in a row. If I missed one, I had to start over again. Meanwhile, I still had to keep up with my homework, and I couldn't go and meet my friends on the weekend or do anything without asking Lucy for permission first. Ugh. At least at school, I could vent to Maddie about it. I expected her to agree with me, but she shrugged and said, I guess your aunt just wants the best for you. Besides, your badminton skills have improved loads. If I could live in a luxurious house, eat delicious food with such a caring aunt, I'd so put up with a grueling training schedule. Yeah, I guess she's right. Maybe I should be more grateful. Of course, on finding out about the school badminton club, I immediately signed up for it. 
I was walking over to the court, swinging my racket about and ready to show off my skills when these two guys approached me. Go back to the cheerleading team where you belong, sweetie. Leave the court for the real pros. How dare these idiots judge me like this? They hadn't even seen me play. Oh yeah? I challenge you to a game. Then we'll see who's serious. We're the best players in the school, just so you know. Pick one. Suddenly, another guy appeared next to me and said, Then let's play doubles. Oh my god, he's Tyler, the best badminton player in the whole school. I've heard all about his reputation and seen photos of him with a trophy in the school newsletter, but I've never met him before. Surprisingly, he's even cuter in person. Pfft, you can defeat us in singles, but can you cover that useless girl in a duo match? That's it. Scoot over. Let me show you what this useless girl can do. The game started and instantly... Tyler and I vibed on the court and were hitting the shuttlecocks at lightning speed. We won in straight sets, and those losers looked so bummed out. <laughs> Tyler seemed super impressed. And then... Good game, Helen. Do you want to hang out again? How about tomorrow? We could go get some food. Mamma mia! How can I say no to that? But when I told Aunt Lucy, she didn't take it so well. Love may seem appealing, but it's a waste of time and energy that will lead to a decline in your badminton abilities. Your grades, your mood, everything. You're too immature to deal with those type of emotions right now. This was ridiculous. I wasn't a little kid. I was perfectly capable of making my own decisions and following my own feelings. He's a sweet guy who helped me out. Of course he did. All guys appear nice at first. Maybe if you just gave him a chance. Wake up, Helen, and stop yourself from throwing away your dreams for some boy. Ugh, it was no use. My aunt was too stubborn to listen. I stormed up to my room, feeling frustrated. No way was I letting my aunt's strictness ruin things with my dream guy. So I decided to sneak out to meet Tyler. But how? Ah, I know exactly the person who can help. Matt's red code. Aunt Lucy won't let me see Tyler. Please help me distract her. Okay, but only if you get me a signed copy of the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Easy peasy. After that day, I was able to go on multiple dates with Tyler, all thanks to Maddie's help. She always came up with the most convincing excuses, like I was going to her house for group study or we were going to a super important event. Then one time when I was supposed to study at home, it was actually Maddie pretending to be me. Later, I sneak back into my room, all giddy. You wouldn't believe how great our date was today. But Maddie just gave this awkward look. What's up? Did my aunt suspect something? N no, everything's fine. Then she immediately climbed out of the window. Hmm, strange. But the next day she acted like nothing had happened. So I let it slide. She must have just felt unwell or something. Meanwhile, things with Tyler were getting better and better. After a romantic date, we walked home, and suddenly Tyler stopped me, looking all shy and nervous. Helen, I, I really like you, and I like spending time with you. Be my girlfriend, will you? OMG, this was the best thing that had ever happened to me. I flung my arms around him and yelled out of my lungs, yes! When I finally let go of him, out of nowhere, a kid on roller skates bumped into me and sent me tumbling into the road. A car zoomed toward me, and before I could process anything, Tyler sprinted forward and pushed me away. When I opened my eyes, he was lying there unconscious. I panically called an ambulance and went with him to the hospital. As I sat in the waiting room with floods of tears, I was so scared and didn't know what to do that I ended up calling Aunt Lucy. Only a few minutes later, I saw her hurrying toward me, looking dead serious. Helen, what have I told you? You lied to me to hang out with a boy? I had no heart to argue about that and immediately burst into a fresh bout of tears. It's my fault. Tyler risked his life to save me and now he's hurt. Aunt Lucy's demeanor softened and she pulled me in closer. After a while of consoling me, she finally opened up and shared a story I didn't expect. Actually, I fell in love when I was around your age, but he betrayed me. I just don't want you to be hurt like that. Oh, that's terrible. But Tyler is a good guy. I just know he is. He saved me. And for that, I'm truly grateful. Okay, I'll trust your judgment and give you my blessing to get to know him further. Thank you. Right then, the doctor appeared and told us that Tyler was all right and he would make a full recovery in a few days. Thank goodness. When Tyler was back, Aunt Lucy stuck to her word and gave me and him a chance together. She even offered to give both of us a badminton lesson. Brace yourself for the craziest training routine ever. But practicing with Tyler made it actually bearable and a lot more fun. I had a big competition coming up. 
which could get me the professional player title and a chance to join the national team if I won. So I needed all the training I could get. Just one more step away from my greatest dream. Also, I couldn't contain my smile when seeing Lucy gradually warmed up to Tyler. My big day finally came. Mom and Dad were here to support me as well. I excitedly got ready. But when I opened the kit bag... What happened? Oh no! Who's destroyed our babies? I... I think Lucy might have done it. Why on earth would she do that? I overheard her saying that she was only pretending to like Tyler so she could keep an eye on you both. What? I honestly believe that Aunt Lucy was actually giving Tyler a chance. But it still didn't make any sense. Even if Lucy hated Tyler, why would she try to ruin this competition? She knew how much it meant to me. There's one more thing, but I don't think you're ready to hear it. Gosh, just spill the beans, Maddie. Actually, the day I disguised as you, I found something out. Lucy's not your aunt. She's your mom. She wants to take you back to Canada with her, and she knows if you won this contest, then you'd never want to leave. I stood there in complete shock. So, my beloved family I'd known all these years wasn't actually mine? And Lucy? How come she had the brazenness to show up now as my real mother and wanted to take me back? I felt like my whole life had been one big lie and immediately rushed to find Lucy. Is it true? You're my real mom? How did you know? I can't believe you did that to me! You're selfish, terrible, and ruined everything! Go away! I don't want to see you anymore! I don't have a mom like you! Grace is my one and only mother! Lucy looked completely broken, then quietly left. I was shaking in anger and pain when a gentle hand laid on my shoulder. Helen, sweetie, I know it's hard to take it in. Trust me, this was difficult for us all. You all lied to me! How could you just agree to send me off to her? You never consider me as your real daughter, do you? Don't think silly, honey. We love you so much and never want to let you go. Unless it's better for you. Then mom told me how Lucy came and persuaded her. Turned out, Lucy had a very tragic past. Since childhood, she'd always been the black sheep in her family. They treated her poorly and despised her badminton passion. Then when she told them she was pregnant, they threw her out. And her boyfriend also ditched her right after that. So she had no choice but to leave me at the orphanage and begin a new life in Canada. After countless hardships, she finally became successful. And all she desired was to reconnect with me. I believe everyone deserves a second chance. That's why I let you two live together for a while. Only if you're happy, I would tell you the truth, so you wouldn't be too shocked. Besides, she can help you more than me now. Hey, you even inherited her badminton spirit. I was stunned for a while. It's true that Lucy left me, but that's because she didn't want me to suffer with her. And I indeed had a happy life. I shouldn't be so rude to her. But it was still a lot to digest, so I went home with mom. I shut myself away until the next day. Tyler came and tried to convince my gloomy self to go for a walk. I know that's a lot, but I think you should make up with Lucy. Why are you still on her side? She only pretended to be nice to you, and she ruined the contest just to take me away from this perfect life. We can find our chance in plenty of other competitions. But there's only one Lucy. She's your biological mother, and it's fine to be mad with her. But you should never reject her. My mind wandered back to all the happy moments I'd had with Lucy. Our interesting chat, the delicious meals she cooked, and the times we played badminton together. She even had a special room to store badminton equipment, especially the rackets. Wait, Lucy treasured badminton rackets. If she simply wanted to stop us from competing in the contest, then she could have just hidden our rackets or pretended that the car broke down. But she would never destroy the rackets like that. Ty, do you remember who else handled our rackets that day? I'm not sure. I, um, oh, I think Madeline had them at some point. So, could it be Maddie? But why? She had no reason to do that. She was my best friend and always supported me to play badminton. I stormed over to Maddie's house, but she's arguing with her dad on the doorstep. You useless, pathetic rascal. Go then. I don't care. Maddie ran off in tears, and I followed her to an alley. Seeing her like that made some of my anger toward her fade. Hey, what's going on? Maddie seemed surprised to see me. She tried to dodge some of my questions at first, but seeing nowhere to hide, she finally confessed. My mom left me to that alcoholic dad who does nothing but shout at me all day. You have two moms who love you and I... 
I don't even have one. I was angry at Lucy because, to me, all of the moms who gave up their child are heartless and deserve no forgiveness. She even wanted to take you to Canada. I couldn't lose you, too. The fear and jealousy got the better of me, so I broke your rockets, then blamed Lucy. I'm so sorry. This sounds tough, but you still shouldn't have done it. I'm always here to listen to you, and I'm not moving anywhere. You're stuck with me. When Maddie felt better, I took her to my home and intended to find Lucy to apologize for everything. But Mom said Lucy had decided to go back to Canada and was on her way to the airport. I immediately hailed a cab to the airport, then ran through departures desperately trying to find Lucy. I was starting to think I was too late, when suddenly I spotted her about to walk through towards security. Lucy! Mom, please don't go! I... I thought you don't want me. No, I was just confused and angry and... I'm sorry that I hurt you. We finally sorted things out and agreed to give each other a chance to start over. So, what happened next? Well, Lucy decided to expand her business to the U.S. so she could stay here with me. My wonderful adoptive parents took Maddie in after helping her get away from her toxic father. So now I have two amazing moms, an awesome sister, and... Yes, you know it! A super cute, thoughtful boyfriend. Hey, I'm Madison, and I was born into a well-off family. My parents are successful entrepreneurs who always fulfill their dearest daughter's wishes. Beautiful face, supermodel figure, I have both. But unfortunately, I'm not the only one. I have a limelight-hogging twin sister, Olivia. Since elementary school, my sister has won loads of trophies for her singing. Everyone was so spellbound by her that they seemed to completely forget about me. And it didn't help when mom dressed us the same. Meanwhile, dad was always like, Whoa, I can barely tell my two princesses apart. Maddie, if your sister is tied up with her singing, you could help fill in her place in class. <laughs> Ugh, it's not funny. At all! especially when that kind of came true. Later at 14, when I was still trying to figure out what today's homework was, my sister went and won The Voice Kids. At school, everyone kept giving me gifts and praises just to walk off on me as soon as they realized I wasn't Olivia. Hey, it's not like I intentionally tricked them. Trust me, I'm just as sick and tired of all this as everyone else, so I decided to take action. Ta-da! Did you recognize me? Still Madison here. The one-of-a-kind Madison with pixie hair, smoky eyes, nude lipstick, and this edgy outfit. I look different, right? But... Oh, are you cosplaying Olivia and her upcoming MV? Madison, you're ruining your sister's image! I tried to be different from her, but it couldn't change the fact that I'm the twin sister of a famous singer. There's so many things I wanted to do. But just imagine if I tried out for the cheerleading team or a modeling contest. People would be... Look at the tragic Olivia wannabe. <sighs> The name Olivia gradually became something that haunted me, and now she's constantly gaining in fame while I remain in her shadow. I have my own dream of becoming a model too, and I've gone to every audition I could, but so far, no luck. Oh right, let's check out my new video! Maybe YouTube will be the Kickstarter for my rise to fame! Remember to remove your makeup thoroughly, and the last step is, subscribe to my channel to stay updated with the latest makeup trends! It's only been 10 hours, but look at this! There are over 200,000 views and 1,000 comments! Yay! Let's see! Like if you watch this just because you thought this was Olivia. When you're boring but you have a famous sister. Olivia, you're the goat! Please reply to my comment! What on earth is going on here? No one talked about the video content! It's all about Olivia! Why can't I get rid of that name? I am Madison! Frustrated, I closed the laptop to leave, but turned around to see the mean girls surrounding me. Silly, you should have titled it Skincare Tips from Olivia's Sister. There would have been millions of views by now. Someone with no talent like you should just stay in the dark. Please. Shut up! Just wait! One day y'all gonna become my fans too. Finally, what a long day! But isn't every beginning tough? Me quitting would be exactly what those mean girls wanted, so I can't give up now. I was struggling to set up my camera when mom opened the door and peeked in. You've started a YouTube channel? Why not ask your sister to help promote it? Ah, uh, but no worry. Everyone can obviously see that you're Olivia's sister. You'll probably receive a gold button soon anyway. Ugh, what do you know? I don't even need her help. And please stop entering my room without knocking. Nobody acknowledges my effort just because I look like her. Fine then, just wait and see. In two more months, I'll be 18 and be able to do one thing I've been dreaming of.
That will put an end to all this unfairness I had to suffer. This is it. The moment I've been waiting for. Right here, right now, I'll be reborn. I'm ready to start my life anew. You can open your eyes and look at yourself, Ms. Lewis. <sighs> okay. Three, two, one. O-M-G in the mirror. A beautiful face. A stranger. Not like Olivia's or anyone I ever know. Finally, I can live my life with my famous sister out of my way. Hmm, I wonder how my parents would react to this face that I myself don't even recognize. Hey, I'm home. Hello, but who are you? It's Madison, aren't you? What happened? Did you get plastic surgery? Plastic surgery? Didn't you say you were on vacation with your friends? Your beautiful face. Why did you? You mean Olivia's beautiful face. I'm done living in her shadow. Then I ran straight to my room, leaving them there all stunned. The next morning at school, all the girls' curious eyes were on me. And the boys? Needless to say, people were buzzing around. But there was no Olivia nor Madison to be heard. Nobody recognized me. I am the one and only now. Hey, Angel. Are you lost? Let me show you around. Since when did this mean girl become so friendly? You moving here is the right decision. Our school is the best in the state. Boring. If it weren't for my parents' new investment in this area, I wouldn't be at this shabby place. This fame-seeking silly girl instantly bought my bluffing. Her eyes widened, looking at me like a puppy. Then she did everything I asked her to. Buying me sodas, carrying my bag for me, and even wiping my seat. <laughs> Suddenly, Alicia walked over and nudged Zara. Where have you been? I told you to get me a latte. And who's she? Oh, this is my new bestie. And you should go get your latte yourself, as I'll be busy showing my friend here around, right? Alicia's frown face was a picture. <laughs> what a solid friendship these mean girls have. But the fun had only just begun. As the teacher did a roll call, I raised my hand up at the sound of Madison Lewis. The whole class gasped. And you betcha, Alicia and Zara's bewildered faces were hilarious. Didn't see that coming, huh? By recess, the whole school had heard the breaking news. Me, Madison, just got plastic surgery. Some were showering me with flattery, while some just kept judging the size of my eyes or my nose bridge, blah, blah, blah. But no one compared me to Olivia anymore. They just forgot about my famous twin sister. That's all I need. Madison is unique. Ouch! What's wrong with you? Are you blind? It was you going the wrong way, Madison. Um, he looks so familiar, but I still can't think of his name. He's... It's Dylan. Have you seriously forgotten my name already? That's right, my old neighbor Dylan. His family must have moved back to town again. But how could you recognize me right away? You look a bit different, but I can still tell from your voice. Forget the past. I'm the new Madison, the best version of Madison. Then I walked away from him. Now I'm finally free to do whatever I want without being compared to Olivia. I easily got that cheerleading captain title. From this spot, I can see all the impressed spectators and Zara's look of fury. <laughs> she was the former captain who got dethroned by me. Then I went on and won the school beauty contest too. Alicia's boyfriend, Sid, even dumped her to chase after me. Who's the loser now, girl? But of course, a jerk like him didn't interest me. So I bluntly rejected him in front of everyone. One afternoon while I was going home, Sid jumped out of nowhere and blocked my way. Babe, girls are lining up to date me, but I picked you. Be my girl and you'll see. Come on, just one dinner. Let go of me! Suddenly a big looking guy rushed in, scared Sid off, and then offered to take me home. He introduced himself as Isaac, and turns out we were in the same chemistry class. Oh god, how come I never noticed this handsome boy? Probably chemistry had sucked the life out of me every time I entered that lab room. But it's okay. We can rebuild our chemistry here now. After that day, we texted each other all of the time. And a week later, we became an item. Fast, yes. But when you know, you know. Isaac took care of me during workouts, waited in the salon for hours, and even kept me updated with fashion trends. He's just perfect. But one time, when we walked hand in hand at the mall, I caught sight of Dylan's cold face. I suddenly felt awkward and tried to avoid his gaze. Strange. But why bother? Isaac and I were too busy discussing our upcoming plans anyway. I finally released my second video, and no one mentioned Olivia. But Gigi, Bella, Lily Maymac? Now they're seeing me like those hot girls? Ridiculous! And talk kept coming about how I look like other stars. Maybe she brought their photos and asked the surgeon to copy them, but no way can Replica compete with the original. 
Still, isn't it better to resemble your own sibling than being some stranger's copycat? <laughs> so, did I really look like a carbon copy of someone else? Again? My rush to Isaac. He's the only one I can trust. Uh, just a little, babe. But if you don't like it, there's always a way. So I continued to undergo many other surgeries to find the perfect, unique Madison. Isaac was always there to encourage me. He was the one who suggested what part I should fix next. Sharper jawline, thinner nose, fuller lips. He has an eye for this, right? Seems like your eyes still need some fixing. I'll take you there next week. More? I know Isaac only wanted the best for me, but after pouring my fortune on endless plastic surgeries, I was completely broke, and no way would my parents agree to lend me some. Why not ask Isaac, you wonder? I can't do that. I'm not a gold digger. The surgery appointment was coming up, but I still couldn't gather enough money. What to do? What's wrong? Fighting with your guy? Desperate to offload, I blurted out my problem. So, could you help me out? I'll pay you back as soon as possible. I don't know why you think you need all this surgery. If Isaac really loved you, no way would he make you do this. Let me knock some sense into this dude. Dylan seemed so mad. I tried to pull his hand, but to no avail. Thank goodness someone blocked him. That's Olivia. I don't know what she said, but Dylan calmed down and went inside. Then Olivia walked towards me. You're already so pretty, Madison. Don't mind what others say. You guys don't know me at all. I'd rather be weirdly ugly than be pretty, but look the same as someone else. I don't want to be a copy of anyone. Then I stormed off immediately. Waking up after a restless night, I was reaching my phone to call Isaac, then saw an envelope of money on the nightstand. Is this from Olivia? Why did she... Never mind. No time to think, else I'm going to be late for my appointment. Look, my face has healed just in time for my graduation ceremony. Pretty, huh? But I haven't been able to bring myself to be happy at all, as it's been over a month since Isaac ghosted me. After the eye surgery that day, Isaac insisted I have my nose fixed too. I said I needed more time to recover, but he got annoyed and just left. I've been looking forward to this graduation, which is compulsory for everyone, so he won't be able to avoid me anymore. My parents came too, but probably for Olivia, and today's spotlight is definitely hers. Suddenly, the crowd surrounding my sister gravitated to something else. Hang on, Isaac? Oh. My. God. Standing next to him is a girl who looks exactly like me! And her dress is identical to the one Isaac once gave me. I rushed over to confront him, but he flung me away. Wow, how buzzing! Both the real deal and the knockoff are here. Can you even tell them apart, Isaac? Stop saying nonsense. My princess is the one and only. Hey, you really do look a lot like me. Who are you? So after countless surgeries, I was still a doppelganger? All I want is just to be myself, to be unique. Why is it so hard? I felt rage filling up my body. I ran to the restroom to calm myself down, but it didn't help because I overheard the truth. Isaac and Naomi broke up when she moved abroad with her family. Guess she's back now. Yeah, how much he must love her to do all this. Great, now I get it. Isaac only wanted me to get plastic surgery to look like Naomi. But once his ex is back, he threw me away like a broken toy. So the gossip girls at school are definitely not missing out on this chance to mock me. Girls, stop! My sister, it's you who needs to stop. Don't you know you're the cause of everything? Calm down, Madison. It's completely normal to look like someone. To me, and to your family, you've always been the one and only Madison. No! I've never been seen as the only one! Then I told Dylan everything I'd bottled up inside. Why I absolutely needed plastic surgery. Why I was so obsessed with the fact that I resembled my sister. Everybody had always thought of me merely as Olivia's shadow. I never knew that's how you felt. I'm sorry, Madison. We are such bad parents. Startled, I turned around to see everyone. Madison, I've never looked down on you. I only thought I could use my reputation to make things easier for you. We always try to do the best we can for you two. We thought this change in appearance was what you wanted. If only we'd realized the painful reason behind it. Oh, wow. They actually cared this much about me? I cried even louder and ran straight into their open arms. Maybe Dylan was right. Maybe I really am special just for who I am, not for what I look like. The next day, I went to school to clear out my locker. High school is over. Now I can shake off all the bad memories I had here. Let's start things anew. Oh, finally found you. Um, Naomi, right? I, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to copy you. I didn't know. It's all right. I know it wasn't your fault. I swear, I had no idea Isaac was that much of a jerk. 
I immediately dumped him and exposed him online. How could he think us girls are just replaceable items? He even had the cheek to cry and beg me, but men like him don't ever deserve to be near us. I thought you'd be angry with me. For what? Madison, I'm truly sorry for what you had to go through, but everything has a bright side to it, don't you think? What do you think about having another twin sister? My dream of becoming a star on a runway has finally come true, but the most amazing thing was finding a companion with the same passion as me, who's none other than my new identical twin, Naomi. Bet no one can tell us apart. Miss Madison Lewis, would you go on a date with me after this? Oh, but I'm Naomi. Don't ever think you can fool me, Madison. You've always been different in my eyes. Not every day a girl outside the aerospace community like me could attend this creative science festival thingy, but here I was, all thanks to my genius boyfriend Mike, who just got accepted into MIT's aerospace engineering program. This is all really interesting. So great that Mike brought me here. Hey, you ruined my project. Who are you? Sorry, I, I'm Mike's, Mike? I can't believe he's talking to another girl when his girlfriend is in trouble here. The girl followed Mike and immediately fixed the model I just broke. Such an unfortunate brain behind her flashy clothes. Shh, keep it down. She's Mike's girlfriend. Really? Our valedictorian is into airheads? Huh? I thought Mike and Liana were a thing. Liana, the pretty girl who just fixed a freaking spacecraft model in a split second, is being paired with my boyfriend? I'm Chloe, by the way. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself sooner. I just, ugh, never felt so self-conscious before. Mike and I have been together since high school. Back then, I was popular and had many boys chasing me. Everyone seemed amazed that a girl like me was with a nerd like him. But now, Mike's already an intern at NASA despite being only a freshman. Looks like he's a celebrity among his peers. And I was just his brainless girlfriend. For the first time ever, I felt like I had no place being such an elite student's girlfriend. I couldn't stop thinking about what happened at the science festival, so I decided to talk about it in my talk show, Bubble Buzz. Although I didn't show my face, I had heaps of listeners, and every time the show was on, they flooded my comments section with excitement. Welcome back, my friends. So today's topic is, can a person's heart change when they go to college? I have a friend, Sally. She's been with her boyfriend for two years, 10 months, and 21 days. But now he's gone to college in another state, living among new friends and new girls. Should she be worried that she'll become old news? Obviously, out of sight, out of mind, your friend should dump him before he does. No matter how good a relationship is, it can't escape the three-year curse. The three-year thing is real. All high school romances are doomed in the real world. Mike and I had been together for almost three years. Was this three-year curse really hitting us? Every comment seemed to believe it, while user Twinkle Star seemed to think this whole curse was silly. Curses don't exist. Relationships aren't easy. Both partners have to be willing to make an effort in their long-term relationship. Two years or ten years, it's irrelevant. Why does someone as serious as Twinkle Star listen to my show anyway? Since my early days hosting the show, this person always comments with confusing and boring quotes. I'm sure the curse was not a silly thing at all. Whether it was my three-year friendship with my first best friend, Ella, or my parents divorcing after three years of marriage, the three-year milestone was real. Actually, I do know one couple who beat the curse. They're my grandparents. Grandpa's rather a cold and reserved person who only had eyes for his wife. So I asked Grandma what the secret to their successful relationship was. First, be grateful for your partner and not take love for granted. Second, know him better than you know yourself. Third, learn to forgive and apologize. Was that it? That wasn't exactly helpful. Our relationship was in a life or death situation and I needed to really do something. Right that moment, someone appeared in the kitchen and I couldn't believe it. My sister Mindy. I hadn't seen her in ages since she moved out with dad. I explained my fears to Mindy and she seemed to understand exactly why I was so concerned. Don't worry, sis. I'll stay here for a while so I can help you two overcome this curse and reignite your passion. First of all, as Mike's the biggest nerd I know, you need to appear more academic. Taking Mindy's advice, I gave myself this academia aesthetic, then went to see Mike at the amusement park. Oh, look, there he is. Huh? Chloe? Um, you look different. Since when did you wear glasses? I've, um, always worn them, Mike. You must not have noticed. I stayed up late last night to watch a physics documentary. Now it's time to impress Mike with my knowledge about how water fountains actually work without electricity and run solely on gravity. 
how the fat in ice cream impacts the freezing point, and I could taste the fat droplets, and how G-force and inertia were taken into account when mechanics made roller coasters for the thrill. But he didn't seem impressed at all. Chloe, you're not yourself today. Are you okay? I'm not okay. I've been wiggling my foot at you for ages, but you never noticed my undone laces. You didn't let me try your ice cream first, as you always do, and you didn't notice the effort I put into learning all this sciencey stuff for you. I'm sorry. I have this big project on my mind, and... Mike Jenkins, you've changed. The Mike I know and love was attentive and wouldn't let me walk around with untied shoes. You don't love me anymore. It all got too much for me, so I hurried off. Well, as quickly as I could with my shoelaces flailing. As soon as I got home, I phoned Mindy and told her everything. I was so lucky to have my big sis. OMG, he did what? It sounds like he just doesn't care about you anymore. Do you think? Um, maybe... Maybe he was just... No. If he cared, he would have come after you. Instead, he let you walk on dangerous sneakers. Mindy was right. Mike grew cold on me. This three-year curse was real. Now what should I do? There's only one thing. You'll have to test him. I've been sitting here for the past hour and Mike hasn't... Here he comes. This was Mindy's idea. Faking a car malfunction and calling Mike for help. Wow, you're so good. I'd still be stranded here alone without you. You could have asked someone else or called a garage. There wasn't even anything wrong with... It doesn't matter. But you're my boyfriend. Yes, your very busy boyfriend who lives in a different state. Anyway, I got a dash, and we'll have to take a rain check on next week. I have a lot on my plate. Then Mike left, leaving me more afraid of losing him than ever. As if he just left. His new environment changed him even more than I thought. Chloe, you have to infiltrate his space now before you lose him forever. So I went sneaking into Mike's dorm room and transformed it from nerdy to romantic chic. I hear footsteps. I better hide. I can't wait for him to see it. There's Mike, but, huh? Who's with him? Oh, wow. Romantic much? Then the other person started taking their clothes off. I leaped out of the closet ready to tackle this man-stealer to the ground, but hold on a second. That's actually a man. Mike's roommate, Gus? Chloe, um, what are you doing here? I'm sorry. I just wanted to surprise you and, and ask you to come on a date with me today, tomorrow, whenever you're free. I told you I'm busy this week. I have an inspection tomorrow. So, you mean I'm bothering you? You don't need me anymore? Here, you can use my ID card and go with Mike to the inspection. Make it a hot date. That's very kind of you. Thank you so much. One way or another, my infiltration mission was a success. Hehehe. <laughs> the next day, I came to this technical area with Mike and just stuck to him, not knowing what else I was supposed to do. Chloe, don't touch anything, okay? Mike, there you are. You have to come and see this. She dragged him off, and did she just smirk at me? Ugh, what an awful pick-me girl. She was obviously trying to separate us. No way was I gonna let her get away with that. I'd show them all that I deserve to be with him. While Liana's by herself walking around with a VR headset, I came to tell her to keep her hands off my boyfriend. Oh, there you are. Stay away from Mike. Little do you know that he has a girlfriend. You're just a clingy airhead that he's too polite to break up with. I'm the perfect girl for him, not you. I, I'm the most influential radio host on social media, and a third wheel like you call me an airhead? I'll make sure everyone knows what a horrible person you are. Really, so scary. As if I'll be worried about those pathetic gossip girls. How dare she? I pushed her, and suddenly, smash. Her headset broke into pieces on the floor. Oh no, Mike told me not to touch anything. What are you doing here? What happened? I'm so sorry, Chloe. I know that you're not okay with this whole thing, but I'm Mike's teammate, and we have to interact a lot. Nothing is going on between us. You're overreacting. Then she ran away in tears like she wasn't at fault. She's lying. I didn't say that. She said she wants. Chloe, enough. I'm too busy to worry about what chaos you're going to cause next. I think we should take a break. He took the ID pass off me, leaving me feeling like my whole world had crumbled. After crying an ocean of tears, I decided to make this right. I threw away my ego and texted him first. But before I hit send, I received a message from Mike saying he was sorry and we would have a trip to celebrate our three-year anniversary. This meant we weren't over and the curse wasn't true. Ooh, I needed to figure out which outfits to bring. I got everything packed and ready for our vacation of a lifetime. It was gonna be so romantic. But all of a sudden, Liana rushed to us and flung her arms around Mike. My pet dog, Nova, she's, she's passed away. 
I can't be alone right now. I'd rather die. That lying party pooper. Poor Mike didn't know what to say, so she just jumped in the back seat without my permission. No problem. The more, the merrier. I'll invite my sister to join us, too. Mindy proved to be super useful, always interjecting whenever Liana approached Mike. But Liana just became more and more shameless. She glued herself to Mike and had the audacity to lie down next to him like I was invisible and even ate his ice cream. Worse still, my oblivious boyfriend didn't seem bothered at all. She's more cunning than I thought. You need to step up your game. It was such a beautiful night, but that third wheel Liana was buzzing around Mike like a mosquito. Then she started talking about physics stuff, and now he's so caught up in their conversation, I may as well have disappeared. Hmm, how could I make Liana see Mike loves me, not her? Well, I wasn't sure if he loves me anymore. Chloe, 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 you long for attention so badly you're willing to hurt yourself. She's already hurt because of you. This is her special three-year anniversary, and you invited yourself like how you've always wormed your way in. I bet you don't even have a dog. I diverted my gaze from a fake crying Liana to a confused-looking Mike. Chloe, what are you trying to do? I'm worried you've lost your passion for me because we're at the three-year mark. We have different interests, and I can't help but feel insecure about us. If you keep acting like this... Well, I just don't know. I've been thinking about our future, too, and I've decided it's time for us to... Oh, no, no, no! This isn't happening! I think I'm pregnant! We got back two days ago, and Mike still hadn't contacted me. This curse had caught up with me, and I lost him for good. I just wish I hadn't lied about the baby. Then maybe our breakup wouldn't have been so awkward. This called for retail therapy. I stepped outside and saw Mike with a massive suitcase. Chloe, I've abandoned the project and dropped out of college. I'm going to take care of you, both of you. Mike scurried around the house to make it pregnant woman friendly. He threw out all junk food, coffee, and even mayonnaise. Also, my high heels were packed away and Mozart was played everywhere in the house. Apparently, it'll make the baby a genius. We were going to have the perfect, happy family life. But when I went to my room to get my laptop for my next radio show, I couldn't find it anywhere. I asked Mike and he said, I packed it up with your high heels, makeup, books, and put them all in storage. You don't need any distractions. Just me, you, and the baby from now on. No more radio, studying, or friends. We can have a bunch of kids and grow old in this house. What? This wasn't what I wanted. Neither of us should have boring, unfulfilling lives or give up our dreams, right? I might not have my laptop, but I still had my phone. Welcome back. Today's topic is my friend Sally, again. She lied about being pregnant so her boyfriend wouldn't leave her. Should she keep lying or tell the truth? This time, Twinkle Star appeared again. I know she's always been a brave girl who isn't afraid of admitting her own faults and correcting her mistakes. She should tell her boyfriend the truth and explain how much she loves him. Hmm, sounds oddly specific. Who's this person? Actually, Bubble Buzz, we know each other. Before I could ask him anything else, Twinkle Star went offline. Whoever that was, I think they were right. So I went downstairs to talk to Mike, only he wasn't there. Instead, Mindy jumped out of nowhere holding a pregnancy test and a bottle of Coke. I just need to dunk this in here and the plus sign will show up clear as day in case Mike has any doubt about the baby. No need to. I'm going to tell him the truth. Are you sure about that? What if Mike gets mad? I stopped and thought about it. No, as scary as it was, I couldn't do this anymore. I was looking out for Mike by telling him the truth. Where was he? He had to be around here somewhere. Liana, why was she here with Mike? Mike, I'm sorry, but Chloe's not pregnant. She admitted on her radio show. You deserve to be with someone who wouldn't make up such awful lies. Someone like me. Oh no, I lost the chance to tell him firsthand. Now Mike would never talk to me ever again. Chloe, wait. I couldn't turn around and bear the disappointment in his eyes. I couldn't blame anyone, any third wheel or curse for destroying my relationship. Hey there, I know this is an unscheduled show, but I wanted to talk to y'all. That girl I talked about yesterday, Sally, well, she's me. I faked being pregnant to keep my relationship, but my boyfriend hates me now. I was so terrified of this three-year curse that I became this jealous monster. Mike even dropped out because of me. I'm so selfish for expecting him to spend every minute of his day with me. He needs his own life too. We both do. It's the time apart that makes our time together more exciting. And our love more passionate. Now we've broken up and it's all my fault. I stopped to catch my breath. Who told you I wanted to break up? Didn't, didn't you say you thought carefully about our future and made a decision? 
You know what? After all your silly shenanigans, including faking your pregnancy, I'm still madly in love with you. So the decision I made was, Chloe Ruth Evanson, you're crazy, kooky, and one of a kind. I can't stand the thought of not having you in my life. Will you marry me? Yes? But Mike, after our engagement, you should continue your studies, projects, internship, and whatnot. You don't have to stay by my side all the time. What? I thought you'd like that. We can be together all day and make enough babies for a soccer team, right? Relax, I'm just kidding. I knew you were lying about the baby all along. Your grandpa told me. Turns out, Twinkle Star was none other than my grandpa, who saw that I needed some guidance and tried to give me objective advice. Mike only went along with the lie to tease me. Hmm, who knew my nerdy boyfriend could be so playful? Or should I say, my fiancé? Hi, I'm Vicky, the only daughter of a billionaire, also the sole heir from the third generation of an English aristocracy. Growing up, I was always referred to as Nepo Baby, but this is so unfair. If I had one sentence to sum up my entire life, it would be, well, that didn't go as planned. Before we start, please like and subscribe. I used to live the life of a princess. My house staff was on hand 24 hours to cater to all of my needs. And the biggest decision I had to make each day was to choose which car to go to school in. Still, I wasn't Regina George everyone wanted me to be. I was friendly to everyone and took both my education and my talent seriously. From an early age, I found a huge love for painting. You see, my daddy even invited global superstars over just so they could pose for me. Then, it struck me like a bolt of lightning when my daddy got involved in a messy lawsuit and ended up in jail. As a result, we had to kiss goodbye to everything. Yes, the mansion, the staff, but the worst blow was losing Brad, the butler's son, who happened to be my boyfriend. My sweetie pie, I will collect the stars from the skies if it leads me back to you. Well, a girl gotta survive, so I did what I had to. I sold all of my beloved clothes and jewelry, but holy cow, all those Pradas, Gucci's, and Tiffany's still weren't enough to cover a week in a five-star hotel. Hey, use this. Miss, your card has been declined. Clearly you have insufficient funds and therefore must leave. Excuse me? The nerve. The ingratitude. I used to be one of their best customers. It wasn't as if I was the second inventing Anna or anything. So that's how I ended up here, under this bridge full of homeless people, desperately waiting for Brad to come back to me. In the meantime, at least I still had my paintings, which could be my ticket out of here, right? But Jesus, look! Those people kept taking them to smash cockroaches, while others even used them as firewood! Then, one day, as my belly was arguing with me over the lack of food, this charity group showed up. They came to distribute food to the homeless. I scrambled to my feet to ask for some, but was stopped by this woman. Look at your flashy outfit. You can't take food off the needy. How inappropriate. No, no, no. I'm homeless too. Just then, a whiff of the Labo Santal 33 filled the air, and a luxurious lady emerged from the crowd. She waved off the mean woman, then peered at my drawing. Did you paint these? Yes. I've been painting since I was a child. I've painted everyone from Taylor Swift to Ronaldo. Impressive indeed. I'm Diana, a widow of a great fortune. How would you like to come and live with me in exchange for sharing your artistic brilliance in my daily portrait? I was speechless for a few secs, then agreed right away. I was obviously destined to be rich, so it seems I couldn't escape my fate. I arrived at the villa, thinking that this was awesome and I finally landed back on my feet. But then... The euphoria was replaced with a gut-wrenching blow when Diana introduced me to her fiancé. Brad? Right after the awkward introduction, I pulled Brad away and confronted him. How could you cheat on me like this? I'll tell Diana. We broke up. Besides, having exes is normal. If you tell Diana I'm your ex, then it's you she'll throw out, not me. I couldn't believe the cheek of this guy. And you know what? We never broke up. I just couldn't spend another moment stuck with this jerk, so I decided to paint Diana a portrait as a thank you and then leave forever. Only, she really loved my painting. Thinking back to those glum days under the bridge, I realized, well, Brad was here, but so was a warm bed, steady meals, and someone who genuinely loved my art. This place was big enough to avoid him anyway, right? So far, so good. Well, until one day. All I did was ask the maid to get me a clean paintbrush when a guy got all grouchy with me. You have legs, do it yourself. 
Who are you to talk to me like that? Soon to be the owner of this mansion? Any problem? Leave her alone. It's what the staff are here for anyway. The room suddenly bristled with tension as Brad and that guy exchanged hostile looks. Then he coldly walked away. Suddenly, Brad pulled me out to a corner. Vicky, sorry for hiding it from you, but I have no feelings for Diana. I'm here to spy on her as she's the reason your father's in jail. I'm here to find evidence and help him regain his honor. Wow! What? I know, it's hard to believe, but I need to cooperate with me. That dude is Charles, Diana's son. He'll try to mess with me by all means, so we need to stop him before he does. It made sense now. I knew Brad loved me really and wouldn't pick some old woman over me. Then he told me his plan. He'd continue seducing Diana and persuade her to get me to tutor Charles, while I had to befriend Charles to get information out of him. I felt kind of nervous, but the chance to clear Daddy's name left me with no doubts. However, Charles wasn't the approachable type. He was so curt and rude. And no matter how wide I flashed my friendly smile, I always heard no more than six words from him. Let's do some still life painting today, shall we? You do what you want. I was trying my best to teach him, but he doodled on the page and always came up with the worst drawings I've ever seen. Then one day, he suddenly insisted we go outside for some outdoor portraits, and he to draw me. So my plan did work! Yes! I excitedly stood in the bay window and did an elegant pose. It was sweltering standing there, but I endured it for the art. But it had been four hours and he didn't seem to have finished. I couldn't stand any longer, so I rushed to him and dropped my jaw to see what his canvas was. Totally blank! I. Am. Furious! <sighs> Calm down, Vicky. Perhaps Charles was like an onion, with multiple layers waiting to be peeled away. So I decided to take a more psychological approach. I asked Diana for Charles's photo book, and saw a family photo. This must be Charles's father. I'd paint it, in the hope this thoughtful gesture would move him somehow. On Charles's birthday, I happily gave him the beautifully framed painting. Unexpectedly, upon seeing that, his face darkened, and he had this fiery look in his eyes. He furiously threw the painting to the ground and yelled at me. Disappear! I can't stand you! What the? Fine then! Why is this guy gonna be so rude? I spent all week on that painting. What a psycho! I was packing my bags when Diana came into my room. She explained that the man in the photo wasn't Charles's father, but her ex-boyfriend. Charles's father died when he was little, then her ex was the one who had taken care of Charles since then. To Charles, he was the world. That kid was even closer to him than me, but then we broke up and he vanished without as much as a word. Charles has been hostile and distant ever since. I didn't know behind his rocky exterior was such a bitter truth, so I immediately found him. Charles, I I'm sorry. Go! I might look terrible now, but I was once my father's princess. He gave me everything I could ever ask for, except his time. My parents divorced early, and I was left alone. Just like you, Charles. This loneliness, this yearning for a family bond, I share with you. Seeing his hand loosen, I continued. My intention was never to belittle you. All I wanted was to burst the chasm of misunderstanding between us. Charles still stayed silent, but his facial muscles had relaxed. And when his gaze met mine, he slammed the door shut. So I decided to stay, and even though Charles continued being a grouch towards me, he stopped with the pranks. I also noticed that when Charles focused on something, he turned into a different person. He always stuck his tongue out, which looked adorable. Watching Charles drawing as if he was fighting with the paper, I came here and guided him, but suddenly our eyes met. He has such dreamy eyes. Oh no, Vicky, less of that. You were here to prove my daddy's innocence and get back to the old life. As for me and Brad, we had to make do with grabbing moments together when we could. When this is over, we can vow to be together forever and have a wedding more lavish than any of the Kardashians. My love, you must be patient. We will be together properly soon. However, when everyone was around, Brad kept up the lovey-dovey pretense with Diana. I knew it was totally fake, but I couldn't help but feel annoyed. I couldn't just sit there smiling like everything was peachy. So, after I finished the painting, I followed Brad, intending to ask him what the next step was after I successfully approached Charles, when I spotted him sneakily talking to someone. Hey, Pop. Yeah, Diana's like putty in my hand. Vicky complicated things, but I came up with a plan to deceive her. I thought that little pest would be long gone by now, but seems Charles hasn't kicked her out. Any ideas? The fury whirled like a tornado inside me. I instantly charged at him and smacked him in the face. What? 
You? Wait till Diana finds out about this. Oh, yeah? If you challenge me, then be prepared to lose. Say hi to your bridge pals for me. I immediately found Diana and exposed all about Brad to her, but her face suddenly turned serious. I knew you'd say anything to divert from the truth, but I know you stole money from me. The maid found it in your room. Stole? What? What are you talking about? Then I looked at Brad and saw him smirking. That conniving mastermind. Before I could try and defend myself, a staff member hurried in and passed Diana a letter. Charles was missing. Everyone was freaking out and refused to hear me out, and the chaos left me powerless as my stuff was dumped outside the villa. I ended up right back where I started and had a complete meltdown. Worst of all, I was worried about Charles. Was he home yet? The next morning, I was trying to sketch something when out of nowhere, Charles appeared. He handed me the keys to this small but cozy apartment and told me it was all mine. Stunned and grateful also, I couldn't stand but hugged him hard. By the way, where did you go? Nowhere special. Felt suffocated, so I left. This time, Charles was like a different person towards me. He visited me every day and even helped me sell my paintings. Over time, my feelings for him grew and we started dating. Our relationship was filled with warmth and affection, and every moment spent together felt like a dream come true. Only, I felt so guilty keeping my dating history with Brad a secret from him, but the fear of losing him loomed over me. If he knew I'd approached him with hidden motives at the beginning, he'd despise me forever. But I had to at least tell him something. Be careful around Brad. I don't think he's a good guy. I know. He's a gold digger that's part of a romance scam ring, targeting rich women to blackmail them. Wow. Charles sure knew his stuff. Hang on. Does it mean that Brad intended on blackmailing me too? When I'd been rich? I'm going to expose him at the wedding ceremony. Come with me. Today is D-Day. The Grand Hall was drowned in the ethereal glow of lights, standing in the center were Brad and Diana, ready to exchange lifelong vows. All eyes were fixed on them. Out of a sudden, the whole hall went dark, and an anonymous face appeared on the screen behind them. Tonight, we bring the spotlight on our group. Unbeknownst to many, our Brad Thomas is, in reality, Jackson North, born and raised in Pennsylvania by his father, Richie North the ringleader of scams to trick rich women into marriage and calm them out of their fortune. Then the evidence of Brad being affectionate with innocent victims started appearing on the screen. After that, the spotlight immediately stopped on Brad, who was about to flee the scene. Diana roared in anger, rushing there right then and flung a glass of wine right at his face. The whole crowd started to murmur. Hang on, everyone. The party's not over yet. Check their menus to reveal the other accomplice. Everyone frantically checked, but then looked bewildered to see all the menus were empty. All except for mine, where there was a photo of me and Brad. So since the beginning, Charles already knew about my relationship with Brad? And he thinks I'm Brad's accomplice? I turned to Charles, but he immediately let go of my hand. We're over. This whole time, Charles played me like a hurtful trick, and even thought me capable of something truly awful. I messaged him to meet me by this lake where we used to go. It had been one hour, but he hadn't shown up. This might be the final nail in the coffin of our relationship. Just as I was about to let go, I saw him trudging towards me. Charles, listen to me. I'm not with Brad. I tried warning you about him. I heard the whole sneaky conversation of you two. Your love words and your filthy plan on my family. Then my private detective sent me those photos of you both together that proved me right. You hired someone to spy on me? Not you, Brad. That's why I left home. I thought you were my friend. And I thought we were more than friends. Brad and I did date in the past, but that's all. He tried to use me just like he used others. My feelings for you are real. You have to trust me. So? I didn't know about the scam. I'm sorry I ever fell for Brad's lies and first approached you. He told me your mom was involved with my father's downfall, and I guess I still wanted my daddy to be innocent that I stupidly believed him. Charles didn't utter a word. He just turned around and left. But hang on! May I ask, why didn't you publicize my face in that picture with Brad? I just wanted you to know what it felt like to be hurt. But I couldn't bear to see you hurt either. Let me go. I need some time. Then he left me there, watching him disappear in the dark as the world around me collapsed. After the rain, the sun finally shines again. The police finally caught up with Brad and his dad and locked them both up. Diana tracked me down and apologized to me. 
She asked me to go back to the villa and paint for her, but I refused. I can't keep on being so trusting and relying on others so much. It's time for me to believe in myself and stand on my own two feet. And more importantly, I couldn't face him anymore. Hi, it's Vicky again, but in a fancier version. After all the sweat and tears, I finally made it as an artist. I was just chosen to collaborate on an important art project with this big company, and my life would turn a new page upon opening this door. Charles! Anyo SAO! I'm Minzi from Seoul. Do you believe conspiracy theories are real? Because I do. Before I tell you my paranormal story, please like and subscribe. Nothing much to say about myself. I'm timid, introverted, but above all, I have a big ambition to webtoon horror category. Ahem! It's one of a kind, right? I've spent sleepless nights on that. Go kneel in the hallway for 30 minutes. Now! Aw, oh, man. Creepy Mincy is at it again. She wants to haunt the whole class with those ugly doodles or something? Ugly? Well, not as ugly as your... your grandmother. The whole class gasped at my insensitive words. But it's that girl. Supin's fault first. No matter how invested I was into my draft, it only ended up another chance for Supin and her posse to laugh at me. And well, thanks to my poor communication skills, no one wants to be my friend. Well, except Hajun, my childhood friend. He's always been so nice to me, not to mention he's handsome, friendly, and smart. You could tell I had a crush on him, right? But of course, I have no guts to tell him. <sighs> One day I was riding my bike around when I suddenly saw flyers from Blackwood Publishing, the biggest publisher on Webtoon. They're looking for a comic collaborator. Oh wow, I could send mine to them, but would I stand a chance? I bet the candidates are way more talented than me. As, I guess I better stop dreaming. Just then a skater kid dashed towards me. I managed to dodge him, but ended up crashing onto the pavement fence. I felt myself flip through the air and then everything went black. When I opened my eyes, I found myself on the hospital bed. Mom and Dad were beside me. They looked like they couldn't believe it, then burst into tears. Mincy, honey, you're finally awake. Thank God. You've been in a coma for the whole month. We were worried sick. Hold on a sec. A whole month in a coma? Was I that seriously injured? It took me a few days to recover and process all of this before going back to school. Bet these kids didn't even notice I was missing class for a month, though. But suddenly, someone sprung on my back. Supin? Ah, oh, here you are, Urichingu! Let's go shopping today! The dress you picked me last time was perfect for my date! W what dress? Am I friends with these mean girls now? And not just them. Everyone else seemed to be friendly to me all of a sudden. They gave me cookies, carried my food tray, and even lent me their notebooks. It's weird, but kind of nice, though. <laughs> Except the only person I cared about just straight up ignored me. Hey, Hajun, wait up. Are you all right? I'm fine. It's none of your concern anyway. Oh, I just want to check in on you. <sighs> Could today get any weirder? Yes, it did. When I came home, I suddenly received an email from Blackwood Publishing. Congratulations! Your digital comic is now officially published on our website. To celebrate your success, please come to our office tomorrow. Huh? Is this a prank? I quickly checked, and it's not. My comics were literally on the headliner. But how? I mustered all the courage and went to the publisher. One step in, and I was overwhelmed by all the facilities. It was all so new to me. But just then, a group of people flocked around me and babbled to me nonstop, like they'd known me before. Yeah, our faith boy group BOF, Boys Over Flowers, is holding a concert tonight. Those opas make my emo heartbeat like crazy. Hey, you should come with us. It's gonna be so much fun. Eek! Oh, but didn't those boys only lip sync and dance half-heartedly? I even heard people say it's a waste of money going to their concert. Guys, did I say something wrong? Suddenly, I got this chill down my spine. Someone's hands were crawling around my waist. My boo-boo's here. Ah, pervert! I turned around and slapped him in the face. Oh, why did you do that? It's me who should ask this. Why did you touch me? Are you serious? Wait, are you still sulking with me? What? I'm sorry, okay? Now your boyfriend's ready for some snuggles. Boyfriend? Last time I checked, I still had the biggest crush on Hajun. How did I settle for this dandy? The guy was extremely clingy. He wouldn't leave me alone for a sec. Um, don't you have any work to do? Work? I am. I'm tending to the artwork of my life. You! <laughs> uh, sure. He also kept insisting on seeing my webtoon draft to help me polish it. Help my butt? He only messed it all up. 
Not to mention, everything is completely new to me, but everyone acted like I'm so used to all of this. This didn't feel right. Later the day I told my parents about this, and they said the doctor did mention possible memory loss due to brain injury. Hmm, makes sense. But why did they seem all anxious? Over the next few days, I tried to cope with my new life, even though it didn't make any sense at all. Like, I now had my favorite seat in the canteen. You nerds are sitting on Minzy's spot. Move! And apparently, I got a new hobby of skipping school now. What's the matter? You've done this so many times before. <laughs> Why did I even do this? Hajun, on the other hand, still kept distance from me. Until today, we had a project discussion. I tried to break the ice, but he only replied coldly. Why are you here? This whole month you've ditched me to hang out with your hot friends, and now you suddenly want to talk to me again? The, the whole month? What do you mean? You suddenly turned 180 degrees and became this attention seeker. You even pulled stupid pranks on those mean girls and got them to worship you as their leader. B but I was in a coma the whole month. <laughs> You're kidding, right? No, why would I joke about something like that? Then who was the Mincy I saw every day at school the past month? Was he saying I was in two places at once? How was that possible? Hajun came up with a bunch of conspiracy theories, then concluded that I had an imposter, and she had been replacing me while I was in the hospital. It made perfect sense, but so bizarre at the same time. Seeing how freaked out I was, Hajun gently comforted me, saying he'd help me figure this out. I knew it. He still cared about me deep down. While we were discussing, Su Pin and her clique came interrupting us. Hey, Mincy! What are you doing with this geek? Remember our group meetup today with the Ansan Highs boys? Meet up? Uh, no, I don't think I can- Of course she remembers. Can I come too? I'll keep my mouth zipped. Fine, now hurry up. Psst, what are you up to? Your imposters must have known about this meetup, so she might be there. This is our chance to catch her. Except the imposter was nowhere to be found, while I was stuck with these self-obsessed dudes. Where's your sass, Mincy? Introduce yourself. Oh, um, hi. Uh, I'm Mincy. You can call me Sugar Mincy. Because I'm sweet as pie and you sure want to take a, a bite. The whole room was dead silence. <laughs> Girl, you got no riz. Wonder why you can't date anyone. Everyone was laughing at my face. Luckily, Hajun grabbed my hand and took me out of there. Here's much better. But I couldn't help but thinking how my life had turned upside down because of that imposter. You all right? You don't have to force yourself into a mold that isn't for you. You're special for who you are. And I prefer this you rather than that imposter. I could feel something churning in my stomach. I'm so glad I always have him by my side. The next morning, Su Pin and her clique suddenly came to apologize for laughing at me. But why? Uh, didn't you come back last night and snapped at us? Told us to publicly apologize to you today? I did? So the copycat did come to the karaoke. Did she intentionally stalk me? Later that day, I went to tell Hajun about this. But why did she have to do that? I mean, she tried to stand up for you, right? I don't know. It must be part of her scheme or something. I have to find her ASAP. Suddenly, I got the notification of the Mean Girls live streaming at a cafe. Well, guess who it is, guys? Oh, our little rich lady is a waitress. And she dared to look down on us all the time. She steered her cam towards the poor girl they were talking about. And she looked exactly like me. It's her! Hajun and I immediately rushed to the cafe and saw Su Pin and the imposter was about to jump at each other. What's going on here? Mincy? Wh what? Why are there two Mincy's? <laughs> it's a g -g 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 ghost! Guys, run! You! Who are you? And why did you pretend to be me, you imposter? Mincy, finally we meet. I'm your twin sister. Minha! S sister We're related? But mom and dad never told me I had a long-lost sister. Because you're adopted. They didn't know you had a twin sister who just got adopted before you. You're lying. I'm not. I didn't know this either until my mom was in her final moments. Mom had been sick for a while. So one day she called me to her bed, told me the truth before she drew her last breath. After that, I came to find you. But you were already in the hospital by then. You did wake up after surgery, but once you saw me, you immediately had a seizure and fell back into a coma again. Your parents and I agreed it was best for you if I stayed away and waited until you fully recovered. Meanwhile, you decided to live my life for me? Believe it or not, I actually wanted to know what my long-lost twin sister's like. How she's doing. Turns out you're a very talented comic artist, but you're always so insecure. And you're not doing well with the kids at school either. So I wanted to help you out. 
sending your webtoon draft, working at the publisher, and fixing those mean girls' wagons. I just went with it and ended up getting too wrapped up. Really, did you get wrapped up in dating a random guy under my name too? And what about school? Did my parents agree to let you replace me? It was my idea and I persuaded them. They're just worried about you. I didn't ask for any of these in the first place. Thanks to you, I've become a stranger to my own life. You're happy now? Then I ran away, never wanting to see her again. Still, the worst part was, my parents lied to me. Why did you do it? You didn't tell me I'm adopted, and now you let a stranger replace me? Do you really see me as your child? Minty, honey, of course you're our daughter. Nothing could ever change that. We were afraid you'd be sad if you knew you were adopted. Truthfully, we love you more than you can ever imagine. It's a lot to process, but I had to be strong and stay focused. But soon, whisperings caught my ears. Did you notice Mincy recently is different and even a little bit dull? Where's the cheeky Mincy we're used to? Hey, do you get that bad vibe from Mincy lately? Somehow she'd gone back to being a sullen, creepy nerd again. God, why did everyone keep comparing me to that imposter? Hey, you all right? No, I'm not. Everyone seemed to like Minha and she'd only been here for a month. But nobody cared about me. I do care about you. You always got me. Your handsome friend, ready to the rescue. <laughs> Whatever you say. Come to think of it, your sister only meant well. Despite her way, all she wants is to help you to be more open and show your hidden talents to the world. What Hajun said got me thinking that night. Maybe he's right. If it hadn't been for her, my webtoon would have been forever locked in my iPad. Besides, she's only got me as a family. I've got to see her now. Hey, I came to apologize. I could see you only meant well. And I was only acting ungrateful. I'm sorry. And also, thank you, Uni. There's nothing to be sorry about. It's my fault too for acting on my own and getting myself to fall in love with Si Wu. I haven't told him yet, but I will find the chance. Sorry for dragging you into my stuff. I leapt into her embrace and felt the happy tears running down my cheeks. After the teary reunion, we spend hours catching up with each other. It's like we're reading each other's minds. Must be the twin bond. <laughs> I even invited her to my house, and we had a good time. For the next couple days, I only focused on the webtoon and getting to know myself better. With Hajun's help, I now felt more comfortable and confident speaking with others. One day at the publisher, while I was having a little chit-chat break, a colleague rushed in. Minzi, Minzi, did you hear the news? Your webtoon won the first prize of Comic Award. Comic? The most renowned award in webtoon? Oh my god, I'm dreaming, right? My hard work finally bore fruits! I was celebrating with my colleague when out of nowhere, Si Wu dragged me out. You better announce me as the co-author. I helped you with the sketches, the script, the coloring, yada yada yada, remember? What? You were only messing it up. Do you even know what the story is about? Babe, don't challenge me. Or else, I would tell the director, aka my dad, to kick you out. And by the way, let's break up. Excuse me? You really think I like you? Oh, please. I only do it for your webtoon, babe. Grr, that dandy jerk. I knew he was no good. But what could I do now? Later, I told Minha everything, and she was heartbroken and begged me to help her sneak into Siwoo's office. So I did. Siwoo, please don't leave me. How could I live without you? Oh, it'll be hard, because I'm irresistible. <laughs> but you gotta let go, babe. You have nothing else to offer me. I already know you don't love me, but I do love you. And I already put a love spell on you. You'll forever be haunted by me. <laughs> then, Minha fainted, crashed on the floor. Scaredy cat Siwoo was freaking out. Hey, hey, you're not gone, right? Suddenly, the light turned off. What in the Holy Spirit's going on? The light turned on again, and the guy stopped screaming until he saw me. Hi, babe. Ah, what? Why are, what are you? You don't recognize me. It's me. Minji, in spirit form. Stay the heck away from me. After every despicable thing you've done to me. Please, please. Come with me, you crooked. To, to, where? To the other side. He was so scared his eyes went white. Then he fainted. <laughs> Serves you right. And let me introduce my Ekip with Minha, who should win Oscars for that performance. And Hajun, who's behind the light effect. Didn't think of that, did you? After that, Siwoo kept insisting I was some spiritual force that haunted this place. Then eventually, he quit the job. 
And of course, I had the full copyright of my webtoon and was eligible to receive the comic award. My career has just begun as I decided to continue to work at Blackwood. Mom and Dad also decided to adopt Minha into our family, and we could finally be together. That's the magic I wanted to tell you. This unexpected event changed my life for the better. Chance doesn't come twice, right? You have to grasp it. By the way, I want to ask, do you guys have any unexpected events that changed your entire life? Tell us in the comments below. Hang on, here's one more thing I have to do for the old shy me. Hajun, uh, I've been wanting to tell you something. The past event got me thinking, if I don't start telling you how I feel now, I might regret it later. So, Kim Hajun, I like you. So, so much. Finally, it took you that long. When you were in hospital, you weren't the Minzi I knew, which freaked me out thinking what if I couldn't see the real you anymore. It's comforting that you're still here, because I got a huge crush on you too. I raised the bow, hyper-focused. The target was right in front of me. Watch me conquer. Only... Grandpa, that one would have hit the bullseye. I'm just teasing. <laughs> You're getting real good, pumpkin. Hi, I'm Gina, and I love archery. My grandfather, my only family, introduced me to the sport. He always encouraged me to join contests, saying I had a knack for it. But competition's not really my thing. Talking to strangers was enough of a challenge for me. But my only friend, Bailey, is lovely and cheerful. We've been close since childhood to the day we came to the city for high school and became roommates. My new life promises fun and excitement, but I missed my grandpa dearly and wrote to him often. Dear Grandpa, my life here is wonderful. The dorm room is nice, clean and tidy, and every morning, soothing instrumental music from the speaker reminds me of the times we enjoyed music and a tea together on the front porch. Ugh, Bailey, turn it down. And are you going to do something about your mess? Jeez, it's an organized mess. Ask me about anything, and I can find it immediately. By the way, there's a welcome party for freshmen tonight. Shall we go? Nah, I'm too tired. Come on, Gina, it'll be fun. You'll make some new friends, too. It's just... Okay, stay here then. I'm leaving. Somehow, I felt a bit empty. I'd never noticed that Bailey and I were so different until recently. Bailey's a social butterfly who can make new friends easily. And me? I was introverted and reserved. Hmm, I can't keep being this way. I came to the city for the experience. Duh. So when Bailey asked me to go to the school's fair, I immediately agreed. When the day came, while Bailey's chatting and giggling with other students, I just kind of absentmindedly faded into the background. Since Bailey did not seem to notice my absence, I decided to look around on my own. Suddenly, a scream startled me. Thief! Thief! I turned around to see a thief running away with a girl's handbag. Without thinking, I grabbed a set of bow and arrows nearby and shot at him. That's when I saw another arrow. Flying in the same direction, both arrows hit the thief right on his head and knocked him to the ground. I looked for the other archer and saw the Greek god Apollo, who's also looking at me. Then he went to handle the thief as I took the opportunity to quietly leave the scene. I was still daydreaming about that guy when Bailey barreled into our dorm with a group of friends. I quickly turned myself into a burrito and pretended to be asleep, but Bailey ruthlessly unfurled me with a wide grin. Hey, G, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Samantha, head of the school's archery club. Bailey told me you're quite an archer. Yeah, sort of. Well, we're looking for new members. You should come by. I'll be sure to stop by. Thanks. After school the next day, I visited the archery club and saw a familiar face. That's the guy from yesterday. Ooh, he also blows on the arrow like Grandpa. So cute. Oops, busted. Am I hallucinating or is he walking toward me? Hi, you were at the school fair. Your shot was phenomenal. I'm Chris, by the way. I'm Gina. So you're new here? Actually, I'm not sure if I'm going to join yet. Well, how about a little demonstration? Panicked, I try to shoot with shaky hands and totally botched it. Sorry. Relax, you got this. He leaned over me and my heart was beating like crazy. I took a deep breath, softly blew at the fletching, and this time, I hit the target. See? Amazing shot. You should be more confident and open up so more people can get to know you. So Chris is into extroverts? He's right. It must be great being around an outgoing, confident girl like Bailey. She'd only been here for a week and already knew half of the school, and everyone loved her. 
So, later that day, after struggling with myself, I decided to ask Bailey for help. Help? With what? Help me be you, an extrovert. You're fine the way you are. Why change? Right then, Samantha came to pick her up to go to a birthday party. Wanna join us? Uh, you'd rather stay here and re, correct? You know me. Then Bailey left, just like that. All right, if she doesn't want to help, I'll do it myself. Time to break out of my cocoon. So I spend the next few hours giving myself a makeover. Not bad, was it? When I arrived at the party, everyone gawked at me. Hey, are you the sun? Cause your beauty is blinding me. If so, you should stay 93 million miles away from me. As much as I wanted to run straight home, a voice in my head kept screaming, socialize. On the internet, they said extroverts are always ready to make friends, like Bailey, who's part of every single conversation. So I mustered all courage to throw myself into the largest group who's talking about cute Arctic animals. I remembered a communication tip, lead the conversation. So I did. Isn't it so sad that those animals are losing their habitat to climate change? The next five minutes was me monologuing about the issue, but they didn't seem too interested. Okay, plan B. Bailey also always knows how to stand out, so when everyone started dancing, I stood in the middle of the room and danced my heart out. But after that, everyone looked at me like I was an alien, including Chris. When I was finally in my room, I felt totally defeated. Do you seriously want to be an extrovert? I need to, Bailey. If so, maybe take it slow and don't push yourself too hard. You don't have to become outgoing overnight. Ugh, Bailey clearly didn't believe I could do it. Fine, I'll show her she wasn't the only charming extrovert here. My first order of business was joining the archery club. That would be my best chance to impress Chris. To make up for the embarrassment at the party, I braced myself and approached the most playful guy here. Uh, hi, I'm Gina. I like your shirt. Um, thanks. I'm Patrick. Patrick is the student council president. He's here to help promote the archery club. Then whenever Chris passed by, I tried to joke around with Patrick, although he seemed distracted. But Chris just turned away and looked unhappy. Gina, what's the deal with you and that Chris guy? He keeps looking over here. Oh, Chris? He's just a club mate. Maybe it's because he doesn't like me very much. Boys thing. Anyway, I'm thinking about joining this club. Would you teach me? Sure thing. After that, Patrick and I often practiced our tree together. I got too excited and set the target as far as I could, pulled a string with all my might, and tried to keep my cool as the arrow hit the bullseye. Out of nowhere, Chris popped out. Awesome, Gina. Best shot I've ever seen. Impressive, Gina. Want to grab a drink before you teach me how to do that? Right then, Chris offered me a bottle. You like apple juice, right? I saw you only drink that at the party. Eee! He noticed! Thank you! Would you like a ride back later? Finally, a chance to get closer to Chris! I'll drive you, Gina. I'm more familiar with that route. I was gonna say no, but Patrick had already pulled me away. Why did he ruin my romantic moment? Maybe he liked me too, but I already had my sights set on Chris. Chris seemed to care about me, but it would take a little more for us to actually be a thing. Everything was falling into place, and I felt like I was becoming more outgoing. Though sometimes I still took detours or hid in the restroom to avoid small talks, things with Chris were going well. But the next day, I saw Bailey and Chris locking arms and laughing happily on the street. Are they dating? Then why did Chris keep my hopes up and act like he cared about me? All my efforts were for nothing. Even if I tried to be like Bailey, of course Chris would prefer the original. I glumly went to my room shortly before Bailey, Holly, jolly as usual, came back. You look awfully happy. Hot date? Nope, not at all. Are we having secrets now? Of course not! Anyway, what are you up to today? Beating around the bush, huh? She's obviously in love with Chris, but why keep it a secret? Just so they could still mess with others' feelings. After that, I refused to talk to Bailey and avoided Chris. Whenever he greeted me, I'd pretend I didn't see him. And if he approached me, I'd go to Patrick or ask him to take me home. It was petty, but what else could I do? In Patrick's car, I got Chris's texts. He probably just wanted to two-time me, so I turned off my phone. Everything okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You're not a very good liar, but I have just the thing to cheer you up. A few minutes later, we pulled up to a quiet spot with a stunning view. But magnificent as the sunset was, I still felt the sadness wash over me. Wanna talk about it? And I did. I really did. It felt good to finally get everything off my chest. Patrick listened patiently, nodding and understanding. When I finished, it's already twilight. Thank you for listening to my rant.
Sure, anytime. Uh, I want to be there for you, Gina, and I would never hurt you. I know you're into Chris, but I really care about you. You're a true hidden gem, and I want to help you be all that you're meant to be. I was surprised. At that moment, Patrick became even more attractive than I'd ever thought. Maybe I could, I should, be with someone like him and forget about those toxic people. So, I agreed to date him. The following day, Patrick already made it public. See, that's what a decent guy would do. He took me to the spa, cooked for me, and was always so sweet. I'd never felt this way for anyone, and it actually felt like love. However, it wasn't always peachy being Patrick's girl. He constantly attended tons of events as the student council president and would have me as his plus one. On those occasions, Patrick would talk to everyone while I stood awkwardly. I wanted to join, but didn't know how. All right, laughing would totally show that I'm following their conversation. But everyone just stared blankly at me. What's so funny about my grandma's broken hips? Oh, jeez, I wanted to dig myself a hole immediately. Soon after, Patrick told me to utilize my archery skills for a fundraising commercial shoot. The pictures went viral, and I became popular. People wanted to befriend me everywhere I went, and it was exhausting. When I told Patrick, he said, That's good. You'll be the face of this fund, which will help a lot of people. Like Katniss Everdeen and the First Rebellion. I'm so proud to have you as my girlfriend. Let's keep this up, okay? Something about that didn't sit well with me. But isn't this the life I've always been dreaming of? I was so busy with Patrick's plans that I had no time left for myself. I even forgot to write to Grandpa, and it had been a while since since I last went to the archery club. Bailey tried to catch up with me, but I still ignored her. We grew further apart, even though we shared a room. The show today was suddenly canceled, so I seized this chance to drop by the archery club. I got more comfortable and liberated with each arrow I shot. I finally felt like myself again. When I was done, I caught Chris staring at me. I was instantly flustered and tried to leave, but Chris followed me. Gina, I don't even recognize you anymore. It's like you're trying to be someone you're not. Are you really happy? You're the fake one. You like social butterflies, don't you? If I stop trying, I'll become invisible again. You just don't like Patrick, and it bothers you that he's my boyfriend. You're right. I don't like him, but it has nothing to do with this. Not wanting to hear any more of his lies, I just stormed off. But as much as I didn't want to believe Chris, his words got me thinking. I found Bailey waiting for me in our dorm room. She looked a bit timid. How are things going between you and Patrick? Everything okay? Of course. You got a problem with us? <sighs> Can you come with me after school tomorrow? There's something I want to show you. I followed her out of curiosity. Bailey led me to the back of the school, then told me to hide in a corner and wait. Then I saw Patrick? He wrapped his arm around Bailey, who promptly pushed him away. Come on, I know you've got a thing for me, Bailey. Why won't you leave me alone? You literally have a girlfriend. Pfft, Gina, I made that chick who she is. A cash grab to make a quick buck off of. That stupid girl still believes that was actually a fundraiser. I could have picked anyone, but the fact that it bothers Chris when I'm with her was the icing on top. I can't be with that obnoxious weirdo, but you? A magnificent work. I can't take it anymore and bolted towards Patrick and slapped him right across his smug face. You are the biggest jerk I've ever met. Uh, you're the biggest loser I've ever met. You have the magnetism of a towel. Watching you embarrass yourself in front of all my friends is painfully terrible. No wonder they snicker about you behind your back. I dashed away in tears as Bailey scolded him. She caught up to me shortly after. I'm sorry you had to find out this way. Recently, Patrick started flirting with me. I couldn't go without showing you his true colors. You can say that because everyone loves you. Even Chris chooses you. And I thought I had a chance with him. It's so unfair. People will never treat introverts like me the way they treat you. <gasps> Wait, you like Chris? Having no energy left to be angry, I slumped down, sobbing. Listen, I'm sorry that I refused to help you become an extrovert. The reason is, you're already amazing, Gina. Since we were kids, I've always admired you. You're smart, patient, and determined. What? Would you believe me if I said I wanted to be more like you? But then I realized that introverts and extroverts have their own strengths, and we do best when we're ourselves. That's why I am who I am, and you should be none other than yourself. I held back my tears as best as I could and hugged Bailey tightly. I'm sorry for misunderstanding you. Thank you for telling me what I need to hear. I returned to my room and saw a letter from Grandpa. 
He asked how I was lately and why I stopped writing to him. He knew living in a new environment would be difficult, but as long as I understood my own worth, I could overcome everything. He finished his letter by saying he'll always love me unconditionally. Tears welled up in my eyes again. Shortly after, Bailey came back all excited. I have a surprise for you. When we got outside, Chris was already waiting. I was extremely embarrassed and confused to see him. Gina, from the moment we met at the fair, I haven't stopped thinking about you. I was impressed with your archery skills, but before I knew it, I was charmed by your intelligence, kindness, even your shyness. Aren't you dating Bailey? What? Chris is my cousin. He talks about you all the time. I was going to set you two up, but you were already with someone else. <laughs> I couldn't believe my ears, and my heart went wild. At that moment, Bailey received another flirty text from Patrick. Ugh! What am I supposed to do with this sleaze ball? Well, well, well. Could you believe it? Bailey let him hear blindfolded for a surprise. Okay, ready for my present? Patrick was surely surprised to see me aiming right at him. You better come clean about all the cheating you did. It wasn't cheating. You weren't even my girlfriend, loser. Before he could finish, I launched an arrow right above his head. Lucky for you, my aim was just right. But who knows, a loser like me could have missed. Patrick freaked out and literally peed his pants. Then he confessed all his faults. Siphoning off public funds, love scamming for money, which all had been recorded. As soon as the video was posted, Patrick was boycotted and lost his student council president position. He had to switch schools after a week. I finally felt confident in myself and won many archery competitions. During the holiday, I brought Bailey and Chris back home to meet my grandpa and showed him my many trophies. Remember everyone, be the best version of yourself and the right person will love the real you. I was chewing popcorn watching my favorite channel with my bestie Diana when I heard Juliana's screeching voice. Cheryl! Emergency! Help me! I dashed towards her room to see her struggling with clothes. Oh my dear, you're here. Come and help me choose which bag would suit my gown better. Gucci or Versace? Is this your emergency? Yes, absolute emergency. I must look fab on tonight's date. What? A date? Don't you remember you just cried your eyes out for some jerk yesterday? Can you believe her? <clears throat> Sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Cheryl, living in New York. And that's Juliana, my aunt. My parents passed away when I was little. Since then, Juliana moved in and became my guardian, as per their will. She was funny and expected to make good company in this huge house, but most of the time she wasn't around. The only time she sat down with me was... I just bought him a brand new Bentley to walk his dog the other day, but the next day he immediately dumped me! He said he wanted to share my burden, but seeing how heavy my 20 carat diamond necklace is, he stole it and ran away! <laughs> My auntie always left with all her heart, only her taste in men really need some fixing. As you can see, all gold diggers. But for some reason, she refused to see those red flags and still hooked on them like a crazy bull. And inevitably, <sighs> her long list of heartbroken stories keep getting longer and longer. Recently, Juliana met someone new and dined out every day. But you know how it's gonna end. <sighs> Once they steal something from her, they surely would run away and leave her inconsolable back to me. <sighs> Actually, I've once dated a guy like that. But of course, I'm not easy to deceive like Juliana. Once I sensed something fishy about that guy, I kicked him in his butt right away. That's why it's my first and also my only relationship I've been in. But no big deal. I have my bestie Diana. She might look timid, but really reliable. She knew everything about me. <laughs> Then one day, Juliana asked me to join them for dinner. Wasn't this the first time she introduced her boyfriend to me? But this guy was kind of special or even strange to her usual style. Hmm, Juliana only ever dated six-pack guys. But now, what's this overweight, short, and bald man doing here? Auntie, are you all right? But the real bummer was he brought along his son, who also happened to be Andrew. My freaking gold digger ex! It all happened when I was 14, the age where everyone was in a relationship, <coughs> except me and Diana. One day, my class gathered to play Kiss, Spin the Bottle, and on my turn, the bottle pointed to Andrew, the only boy in my class who was single at that time. Friends screamed in extreme excitement and started to push us together, and we kissed. Since then, my classmates started to ship us as a couple, until one time Andrew came to me. 
Hey, you don't have a boyfriend. I don't have a girlfriend. Why don't we become an item? Our friends seem to like it too. Stupid offer, right? But 14-year-old me thought it's a good idea to join the dating circle like my friends after all. I mean, being the only single girl really sucked. And he surely got a look and would make a good match with me. So I agreed. And we became official and did what other couples do from holding hands to public kissing. Andrew turned out to be a good acting partner. And it was quite fun, to be honest. Except for those moments where I wish I could just end his life. Bae, I'm hungry. Get me something. Ah. Uh, but he's still totally wrapped up in finishing his 10th burger. Until I nudged him that did he pay attention to his starving girlfriend. Aw, my bae is hungry. Then eat, my love. Ah. Uh, but what was it? I opened my eyes to find out he fed me his greasy finger. Ew! That definitely raised my hackles up. I stood up and gave him my tantrum, but he had the audacity to fight back. If Diana hadn't stopped me there, I swear I was going to give him some scratches. But still, we both had to settle down our first couple fight to continue our lovey-dovey girlfriend-boyfriend thing. Ugh. Things ran quite so smoothly that sometimes I thought I was in a real relationship. <laughs> Then one day, I was walking in the schoolyard to hear some boys talking. Hey, Andrew and Cheryl have been together for two months, right? Yeah, I can't believe our spin the bottle trick that day could be that successful. Shout out to our handsome boy Andy who's willing to go into the lioness's den to help us earn some more allowance from our rich lady. Perfect. <laughs> and now the bait is taken, it's time to give Andrew the cue to action. What? So Andrew's offer only comes from an attempt of leeching onto me? How dare he? I immediately stormed away to find him, sit on a bench. Hi, Bay. Why the long face? Who stole your food? <laughs> Drop your act. I know you're just a gold digger. What gibberish are you talking about? I don't know what's going on with you, but don't put it on me. He still had the guts to deny it and even dared to go berserk at me. We're over. Not long after, he moved to another city with his family. Good riddance. And from that moment, I said no to boys as they only come to me for money. I didn't expect to see this jerk again, especially in this kind of situation. I dragged him outside. You have to stoop this low? Couldn't get my money, so now you asked your dad to steal from my aunt? Quit thinking everything has to spin around you just because you have some money. I just want my dad happy and he seemed to like your aunt. I warn you, don't cause any trouble. The next morning, I woke up to the most shocking news ever. Cheryl, Mr. Hardy and I are engaged. The wedding is soon to be decided and two families will move in together. What on earth? They've known each other for hardly two months and now they're getting married? What? This Hardy guy must have put some kind of spell on Juliana. Wait, so Andrew the jerk, he's my cousin now? No, I can't let him rob me one more time. I so needed some bestie talk right now. But why is Diana clinging to Andrew? I rushed over without a second thought. Hey, what's going on here? Are you blind? We're seeing each other now. What kind of gibberish did I just hear? I dragged Diana away immediately. You better have a proper reason. I, I'm sorry. You know too well what kind of person he is. Why? Um, can you do me a favor? You and Andrew are living under the same roof now, but can you keep a distance from him? What? Are you for real? You know, I'm a bit insecure. Okay, fine. You worry for nothing anyway. In no scenario do I want to be near him. What's wrong with the people around me? Frustrated, I came home, but to see Andrew's dad in my house. We just moved back to the city, so it's taking more time for our housing contract to settle. So we'll have to live in your place, just for now. Is it okay? Of course, Bay. This castle is too big for the two of us anyway. Right, Cheryl? Yeah, how convenient for you, Mr. Hardy. Just move in, and all this house and cars are all yours to use now. And that's how Andrew and his dad entered my life and made it miserable. Every single night, he kept bothering me with a screeching sound that I couldn't stay focused on studying. Stop it, or I'm gonna throw away your flute. Pity you can't comprehend art, cousin. Not just that. I had to share a bathroom with him, which now rather turned into his own exhibition of Star Wars obsession from towels, doormats, or even toothbrushes. Literally everything. Ugh. He even left his stinky football jersey for days. Ew. And of course, I couldn't let Andrew Invasion continue like that. I draw the boundary to set my territory. Hey, that's not fair. You got an inch more. What? Obviously not. And you know where he got his annoying nature from? Yeah, you guessed that right. His dad one day brought a full box of tools and left them everywhere in my house. Then he dragged every old item out of the basement and got them fixed. Hey, this castle wasn't supposed to be his mechanic shop and we have enough money to buy new stuff. One day I told Juliana my bed was too high and I wanted a new one. 
but Mr. Hardy was faster and insisted on fixing my bed. But when I lied on it, it collapsed immediately. Help, my butt! I just know it's his tactics to win Juliana's heart. And it seemed like it worked, as my aunt, who was never seen in the kitchen, now volunteered to show off her cooking skills. Wow, love's power, they say. Then let's see how love would burn. <laughs> I just happened to heat up their love by adding some super hot chili into Mr. Hardy's portion. And after the first bite, he ended up crying like a baby. Don't you know I have a peptic ulcer? Then he held his stomach and left the table. Juliana hurriedly followed him to their room, all looking concerned. New trick to wheedle some more gifts? Impressive. It's you, right? Me what? I ignored him and went back to my delicious sup, but this party pooper stole the dish and scoffed, like being left starving for decades. Okay, fine. If you insist, you just pushed all of my buttons, you moron. I snatched his dish and finished the steak in front of him, and I could see his eyes turned red in anger. And that's when the fork fight broke out between us, until the maids came in to prevent any more calamity. The next morning, I saw my aunt taking Mr. Hardy to the hospital. Oh, I didn't expect it to be that bad. Right then, a delivery man came. Oh my my, wasn't it Green Day, my favorite band of all time? But this vinyl was rare, not everyone could have this. Who, who bought it? It's mine. You? Hey cousin, can you pay for me? I spent all my money on game yesterday. <laughs> <sighs> Classic. Fine, I'll pay. To make up for the prank yesterday. Okay, but with a condition, I'll unbox the vinyl. We return to the living room and open the vinyl. The cool guitar riffs and engaging lyrics gives me chills every time. When my jam was playing, I sang it out loud like usual. And notice Andrew did too. And just like that, we sang together until the song ended. And we started to talk about Green Day non-stop. American Idiot was the best album ever written. Fight me. No, Andrew Idiot. Dookie was the one that established their name. You call me Idiot? Then you might listen to Dookie too much that turned you into a... Into... Cheryl Poopy as well. What? I'm Cheryl Cherry Bomb! Too much for spending time with this jerk this morning. His taste in music is okay, but his personality is definitely not. One day at school, while I was busy with my homework, suddenly a boy stormed in my place. Hey beauty, I get a dare. Would you mind giving me a kiss? What? I very, very mind! Get off me! But he still leaned towards and trying to press his dry as the bark of a tree lips on mine! No one told me it's this windy up here. I'll probably be wiped off of Earth before I could wipe all these windows. It's okay, Harper. Remember, you're doing this for Aaron. Just a bit of tough work for now, but imagine the incredible time you'll be having at the concert. Imagine... Oh my god! Aaron! And her? Hold up, let's start from the top. Hi, I'm Harper, the biggest fan of the greatest boy band, The Statics, especially their rapper Aaron. I turned 18 not long ago, and I'm taking a gap year to find my true passion. To be honest, I'm not really interested in anything. The only thing that makes me feel alive right now is fangirling, following my boys around, concerts, touring, etc. But after months of that, I'm totally broke. Not to mention Aaron's having his solo debut album. So, having no choice, I asked my super sweet boyfriend Kirk to lend me some money. But, again, all you ever did was spend relentlessly on this trash. You don't study, nor get a job. How are you expecting to afford it all? Do these idols feed you or give you a roof over your head? I don't think so. I can't help you forever either. Trash? He called my passion trash? Excuse me, I asked for a loan. Not like I was robbing him. He wasn't like this the other times. Finally showing his true self, huh? Fine, I don't need an unsupportive boyfriend. Anyone that stands between me and my happiness can get lost. So, we're over. Whatever. But wait, I still need to come inside. As Kyra's bestie, not as your girlfriend. You might be wondering what kind of relationships I have going on here. Well, I actually befriended Kyra first. We were both ecstatic. Fandom of the statics. If you know, you know. Fangirl's bond is stronger than any friendship. Her mom works for a big press, so she sometimes could even get us access to shows. Cool, right? So I was always around her place. One thing led to another. Me and her brother fell in stupid love, but not anymore. Have you heard about Aaron's new album? Apparently, it will be followed by a group concert right downtown New York. We can ask Kirk to give us a ride. It will be super fun. Oh, don't want to burst your bubble, but I just broke up with Kirk. Four minutes, 36 seconds ago? No way! Yes way! I told her how ridiculous her brother was, but she still tried to find excuses for him, hoping to mend us back together. But sorry, this heart of mine has casted the dice. It's entirely dedicated to Aaron now. No more dumb boyfriend. 
And that's how I ended up taking on this dangerous job. Its high salary could get me boxes of albums and a concert ticket even. But what am I getting instead? My beloved idol arms in arms with a singer I hate the most on earth, Bianca. Aaron and Bianca rushed to the window and dragged me inside. Please don't let anyone know this. What do you want? Autograph? VIP ticket? Please, you probably know our two fandoms are like water and oil. They already opposed us so badly over a collab last time. Yeah, of course I know, because I was the one who opposed. Seriously, what does Erin see in this girl? She always says controversial stuff, gets caught in dating rumors with all guys on Earth, parties 24-7, and her songs suck. But on a second thought, it's not every day to have the two hottest celebrities on their knees before me like this. Maybe I should act wisely. Either way, this is the lifetime opportunity for me stepping into Erin's life, isn't it? Okay, I'll keep a secret on one condition. Let me be the manager of Bianca. Bianca's manager? Who's looking for me? Wait, who are you? But he didn't even bother to wait for my answer and started stacking out bunches of stuff for Bianca to sign. Being a manager ain't a joke. See, Will's been doing this for years and still struggling. Well then, more reason for me to step in. So I walked over to give him a hand. This poster is mid. Next time, let me handle it. Trust me, I've designed countless stuff for fan events. The title track this time is a bop, but without a good promotion, it turned into a flop. I suggest you make some TikTok challenge for it. I'm a girl Bianca's age. I for sure understand her and the fans more than you. I'll be useful. Right, guys? Yeah, sure. She has a point, Will. You do need an assistant. Right then, Will had a phone call. Seemed urgent. After hanging up, he turned to me. Fine. It's true that I'm overloaded. I have to check stuff at the venue right now, but Bianca has schedules at the radio station in an hour. Can you get her there? Sir, yes, sir. Just like that, I helped Will around, and it's safe to say I was basically Bianca's sub-manager. Life was pretty sweet. I got to tag along to shows for free, while keeping an eye on my love rival. I sure enjoyed playing God with my new puppet. Everything Bianca eats has to get my approval. Bye-bye, yummy tacos and burgers. She's only allowed to use the phone at certain times of the day. Stop texting boys and start working on your terrible music, honey. Then tell those annoying boys to stop bothering me. Even her sleep is strictly fixed. Just because I love seeing her suffer. (laughs) And I make sure her schedule is packed. Vocal training, dance practice, filming content. Girl, you have a lot to work on. But on days where she worked with the statics, I'd let her off a little. Still, that doesn't mean these two could flirt under my nose. Seriously, it's like you guys are begging to get caught. Think about your future. This dumb fling won't matter a bit the day your career is on the edge of failing, won't it? (laughs) I'd make a good manager, right? But I occasionally saw Liam, another member of Statics, being way too chatty with Bianca. Well, as long as it's not my errand. But I know someone who wouldn't like this. Kyra, as Liam's her bias. <laughs> I guess the rumors are true. Liam is a playboy. And to prevent Aaron from getting caught in the same thing, I accidentally arranged Bianca's schedule to be 100% off with Aaron's, so they couldn't meet up. But Bianca still asked me to bring him gifts often, and surprisingly, Aaron wasn't too upset about his girlfriend not showing up. I guess I can get him in another level that Bianca couldn't. We soon talk a lot and hang out also, and he literally blurted out about how Bianca was so uptight, how some of her annoying habits gave him the ick, and that being with me was so much more comfortable. Uh Uh-oh, sounds like love's fading. (laughs) On the other hand, Bianca was extra upset that they still couldn't date on their anniversary. Not on me, though. Aaron himself didn't want to see her and made excuses about how paparazzi had been up in his grill because he's been doing so well lately. But Bianca has had enough with this all. She wanted to go public. I heard her talking to Aaron on the phone about it. No, that's not going to happen. I have to be a step ahead. I immediately searched for a photo, then posted it anonymously on a fan forum. If Aaron goes public with anyone, it's gotta be me. But oh boy, maybe I've not thought this through. What was I even thinking? The next day, the internet went crazy and it's all negative comments. Thankfully, Aaron's side has spoken up and calmed it down by fabricating a story about how this was from a long long time ago. And it was his first love, blah, blah. Anything, as long as things go down. I haven't even finished my sigh of relief. Then, out of nowhere, Aaron's stomping into our studio looking furious. 
R.I.P. me. Bianca, have you lost your mind? I told you I did not agree. Why did you post our photo? Are you trying to sabotage me? Sorry that you don't have a career so you can act careless all you want. But I do. I have my reputation and an army of stupid fangirls to please. I was frozen, as well as Bianca. Right then, a call came from Kyra. I swiftly sneaked out to take it. It's you, right? The lucky girl in the photo? I can tell by just one look. Last time we talked, you only mentioned seeing Bianca in real life or something. When did Aaron come into the picture? How could you not tell me? I was dumbfounded. Didn't know how to handle this. I mumbled out a few words so Kyra would keep this a secret and that we'd talk later. Okay, gotcha. But then help me meet my Liam, please. What? No, trust me, he's a player. They all are. Get over him. So Kyra recognized me that easily. But why Aaron didn't? He even mistook me with his so-called girlfriend, Bianca. That picture was also taken at the secret balcony of his penthouse that he swore he'd never taken anyone there before. Having too much on my mind, I wandered to his place, but ran into... Liam? He's talking to a girl. She wiped her tears, then left. I should get going. Don't want to mess with another player right now. Harper! What? Don't worry, I won't tell anyone about that 400th girlfriend of yours. Correct, it's the 400th girlfriend, but not of mine. Turns out, that girl's also a victim of Aaron the Heartbreaker, not Liam. Liam has always been the one who's cleaning after his mess, making sure the girls are all right and won't do anything harmful to the band's reputation. Probably that's why Public labeled me as the player. I always got caught up with these heartbroken girls. <laughs> and now you... What do you mean? I'm okay. Come on, I know you also got tangled in Aaron's love web. I'm sorry, I could have warned you earlier. I've been trying to hint it to Bianca, but the girl was too head over heels for him. I felt so stupid for thinking I could live that fantasy of being Aaron's girl so easily. All this time, we all blindly put Aaron on a pedestal, while letting Liam be wrongly accused of all the things he never did. Through Liam, I found out that the Statics has been having a problem. Aaron wanted to leave the group because he thought they were a burden and he'd do better on his own. But the rest knew that it would break the fans hard if one of them left, so they've compromised by letting Aaron have a solo album while still staying with the group. Oh no, kick that jerk out now. As a representative of Ecstatic, I can assure you that we won't be sad if we know what an awful person he is. We'll show him the door. Glad to hear that. Now, about Bianca, do you know how to break this to her in the best way? It's hard, but ugly truth is the only way. So the next day, we went to see Bianca together, told her all about how much of a jerk Aaron is, all the girls he's been seeing, all the bad-mouthing about her, he said. Surprisingly, she took it better than we thought. Thank you, too, for looking out for me. I know, I know he's bad, but I thought I'd been able to change him. But yesterday, when he came throwing a fit at me, I realized that I deserved better. Oh, poor Bianca. I really owe her a zillion apologies. I asked Liam to give us a minute and came clean to her on everything. On the photo I posted, on how I intentionally got in between the relationship, on my dumb rules just to get the better of her. I'm truly sorry. I'm just a Tolulu fangirl after all. I'm really sad to hear that because at some point I did consider you a friend. Especially your ridiculous roles. It helped me a lot. Look, you kept me on a strict diet, helped me get a healthy sleep schedule, made me practice more, stay off my phone. No more doom scrolling and obsessing over hateful comments. I can assure that you've helped me become a better artist and human overall, even though it's by accident. You are seriously too nice. How come I spent all these years hating on you? I'm sorry, and I don't think I should be around here anymore. I'd better go back to my normal life. Take care, Bianca. Bianca gave me a tight hug and said that she hoped I'd still come to her concert next week, as she'd perform the dance number we created together. Mm-hmm. Liam was nice enough to accompany me to Bianca's concert. I did ask Kyra if she wanted to come along, but she was all cranky. Bianca's concert? Are you an ecstatic anymore, Harper? She's our enemy. <laughs> kiddo. If only she could see past the hate. She could have met her Liam now. The show was going on smoothly. Bianca perfected our dance routine. I was so proud. But as she went to get ready for the next song, a strange VCR got played. I'm a selfish fanatic. A friend's betrayal. A gold digger. A Delulu. And on screen were pictures of me. No! Is this why Bianca insisted I come? Is this her paying back? Or is this Aaron's? Or Liam's? Suddenly, Bianca on the mic snapped me out of the panic attack. Uh, <clears throat> And I'm all the worst things without your love. Ladies and gentlemen, your favorite track for my second album, Here's Without You. 
Everyone cheered loudly, but a voice behind me took me aback. No, guys! That's not what the video's about! The lunatic is here! This one! Har- Oh my god! Liam! I- Liam quickly shushed her and we dragged her outside. Turned out my dearest sister from another mother did this to me. Why? I hate you. I know everything now. Don't forget who I am. Nothing in this fandom could be hidden from me. You got to befriend the boys, but ghosted me because you want them all to yourself, huh? After everything we've been through, all the shows my mom helped you get in, you bewitched Aaron, sided with Bianca, then called my Liam a player. But look who you're with now. On top of that, you dumped my brother for a stupid reason. The player here is you. This is a mess, and it's really my fault. I should have filled Kyra in on everything sooner. Seeing her right now reminds me of the exact same person I was just last week. The same hot-headed, immature fan. I couldn't blame her. I apologized and told her everything. And with her dearest Liam's help, Kyra, though still mad, started to be more understanding. I love you, and I hope you will soon see things the way I do now. Idols are also humans. They're not all glitters and gold, so we can't expect them to be all perfect, then refuse to see their wrongdoings, or nitpicking trivial things just because it's not up to our expectations. Let's both be a better ecstatic from now, okay? It's been six months since then. I can say that things are definitely for the better now. It's the first performance of the static since they parted ways with Aaron after his real face got exposed. Yes, that happened. Now look, it seems like the crowd has no problem with dumping that troublemaker either. And me? Normally I'd be here as an ecstatic, but not today. I'm now working part-time while studying to get proper certification on talent management. I realized that I did enjoy working with Bianca and I actually had a knack for it, so I'm going to make a career out of it. Now, excuse me, guys. May I get my manager back? It's showtime. Bye!